that's why I turn that shit off, man. The hiring of Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, I don't regret that. Lies, lies, and more lies, and lies on top of lies. As an organization, we had conviction on this quarterback and his special attributes. Um, they both brought a lot to the Bears. Uh, up to ultimately, on the field, the results weren't where we wanted it to, but... Um, Mix it up with iodine and lie. I think they've checked a lot of the boxes. Fail, suck, useless, blech. I just um, you can't ask for better leaders. You can't ask for better forward thinkers. Fantastic, brilliant. You can't ask for people that um, gave their all, had great work ethic, were humble. And we're going to look for a lot of those same qualities. And hopefully with uh, Bill's uh, vast expertise. Concept wise, his run game doesn't match with his pass game. Uh, in the technicalities of, of uh, coaching strategy and uh, valuation processes, that that's going to uh, add a nice added benefit to our search and going to help us find <laughs> The following show is for mature audiences only. Chai City Sports. Watch the tape, and when you see the tape, you know the tape doesn't lie, and there's just, the tape doesn't lie. I've learned over the years to Take just about anything that Owen says with a grain of salt. And I look forward to hearing that story again and hope he includes it in his Hall of Fame induction speech. So you're saying that it's not true? Uh, that's the way it is sometimes with Owen. Don't get the whole story. And Owen knows the story is. This, but the Nagy go obviously is gone, but do you want Pace going with him as well? Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, there's no other option. I mean, you've seen, I just jotted down a couple of stats. I know stats are for losers, but in this case, they're on our side. So Ryan Pace, seven years with the Bears, right? 414 winning percentage, zero playoff wins. He drafted two Pro Bowlers, okay, drafted. And, you know, th those stats sp speak for themselves because how do, you, how do you keep a guy like that? I mean, if you want him and Ted to uh, collaborate their little asses off and, 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 and worry about Arlington Heights, that's fine. But if, if he's involved in anything that has to do with football, I think it's a huge mistake. Yeah. I'm Can anybody good. guess the two pro bowlers that, that, that pay drafted? Cohen and Jackson. You heard it too. Damn it, Shane. <laughs> I'm 39 years old. I'm in the best shape of my life. Okay. Yeah. At 31, 32 in the NFL, when your entire job is just to play football, when you have a nutritionist, when you have a, a strength and conditioning coach, when you exactly. have all that, these guys are on the top of their game. If you even consider getting rid of one or two or any of those guys, it, those two guys are just as much of a selling point in my mind to a new head coach as Justin Fields is, honestly. I know it's a quarterback-driven league, and I know the quarterback's the most important position in football. But if you're Jim Harbaugh, if you're uh, you know, Todd Bowles, wh whoever, you, you, you know, knowing football, knowing you have those two guys uh, on your defense, it's just how 
how could it not be enticing? And then also to what you said, Phil, all these, you know, articles are coming out and all these people are talking and they're ranking the the potential cities that, you know, are going to have a head coaching vacancy and Chicago's at the bottom of the list. How is Chicago in, in any world at the bottom of the list? It's, it's, we talk about it all the time. It's, it's, you know, second or third biggest sport sports market in the country. Uh, you know, the bears are beloved beyond belief. If, if you win with the bears, you're, you're God. We, we talked about Michael Jordan. We talked about all that and win a super bowl, go to the playoffs, have, have a good, you know, a, a good team for five or six years. That's constantly winning. You're, you're on a pedestal like none other in this city. Now you're in fucking Chicago. You got a pocket full of fucking cash. A lot exactly. of guys think that they, they may, that's why at, you have Eddie to have Jackson, football right. people. No, 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 football I get it. People. Absolutely. You it's have to be it. able to, I, that's why I say I can watch all the tape. I'm going to find the talent. I'm I'll be hitting a thousand with talent. It's that part that Shane's talking about. We, Matt, Ryan Pace has failed sitting down, finding the man. Like who Over sits down with Mitch Trubisky and Deshaun Watson and chooses Trubisky over Watson? Well, supposedly he didn't sit with Watson, but come to find out he did. Whatever the case may be, he fucked up. And, and then Mahomes, he was their second choice. Well, you got it wrong. You're... Well, analysis he had such of the a wide gap position. between them, he felt like he needed to trade up one spot. I mean, <laughs> if that's the case and you have Mahomes number two, I, you're like, fuck it. You want to take Mitch number two? I'll sit here and take Mahomes exactly. number three. Exactly. But he had such a wide gap. I mean, that's the, that shows you the end of the day. Analysis. Nothing. All you have, if you if you want to make the case to move on from Ryan Pace, it's really simple and it doesn't involve any going through his drafts and free agency blunders. Kevin White was a bust. Yes. All you have to do is go through the quarterbacks. That's it. And and the early round picks, too. Yeah, he, he, you know. he paid Chase Daniel a bunch of money. You got little to no return at all. Chase Daniel. Ryan Hoyer was here. That was the kid. Nick Ryan Foles. Ryan Hoyer. Nick uh, Foles. My, Mike Andy Glennon. Dalton. Yeah, Mike Andy Glennon. Dalton. All of these guys. And I understand. He's never, and he said, Shane, we're going to draft the quarterback every yeah. year. Yeah. You gotta, the most important position in football hub. Fucking check mark. Shane's like, Phil, can you believe Trevis Gibson had 20 snaps? That's it. And Bruce Irvin, guess how many he got? 32 or oh, 30. 36. Yeah. 36. He almost doubled them. He almost doubled 36 them snaps to Bruce, Bruce not Irvin. Be here next year. Right. He's not going to be here. Signed off the street. It was like, what? Travis Gibson got you two strip sacks. He's out there balling, and he's on the fucking bench. It's like Robert Quinn. It's third and fucking seven from your end Travis zone. Gibson You're going out. Been walking off the fucking field, dragging his tongue off the fucking field. He oh, used him so much God. against the Giants. Bear. This coaching, th- people want to sigh. I'm like, get the fuck out. I know he's a Connecticut kid. I'd have no bias. I don't want to sigh anywhere over near performance. This. At Hallis Hall. Oh, exactly. It's all about the fucking politics. <laughs> Anthony, my boy, Anthony Walker, what's up to you and your wife? Um, I've said that forever. I don't I can't even comprehend being the grandson of the guy who started the league and not know football. Like have to go outside for, for help and resources from Ernie fucking Accorsi. My now uncle called Gunchy. Ernie Accorsi the biggest shoe salesman in the NFL. That was from my uncle, Sam Ritigliano. It's the truth. Ernie doesn't know shit. He just knows people. That, that that good old boys network. That networking is one thing. Look at the Steelers. Okay, the Rooney rule. All that stuff aside. The Steelers were going to hire Grimm or uh, what's his name? Yeah, Russ Dick Grimm. LeBeau. Dick LeBeau. Those were going to be the replacements. Yeah, it was right? going to be Russ Grimm. 100%. And then all of a sudden, this young kid that someone said, let's make a call, check out this kid. He goes in there, it's Mike Tomlin. It's the organization's responsibility to reach out to these guys so they can say, listen, this is a Dave Tobe, for example, if Devin's speaking, or 
Lance Brig. Dave Tobe needs to be interviewed. This is why. I don't... Dave Tobe might have told Ted Phillips he's a fucking punk. And Ted having a bias towards that or whatever emotional moment is the reason they're failing. Stay the fuck out of there. Bring these people in. Give your name. You sit down with them and you determine at that point who is the right person because let's be honest let's look at these coaches and i know shane and i have talked about this forever mark tressman did he have that fire passion and love for winning no john fox did he have it did lovey smith inspire you the fan forget about what he did for the defense the tampa too did he have this end-all, be-all fire that you saw? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Does this guy, Matt Nagy? No. But we did, yes see it. we did see it with Ditka, who wasn't a yes man, who was hired by the old man. The old man understood that because he was an asshole. You got to get an asshole that's going to fight and claw on every play. We're dealing with a guy that doesn't challenge a spot. Do I do it? Do I not? Lovey fucking would fail every challenge. We've talked about the guy. These little things matter in football. We coming with that truth, cause that's what our fans expect Cut off the freaking anchor, move forward to be free But don't you worry, Shane's got the dumbest tweets It ain't no secret, Phil and Shane got some haters But now the mouth stuck like the two and now and later Dematers, frauds get kicked like Coach Tabor Cuts had to be made, we added a barber moderator Up and down, boys got you double checking Sad sack strolling like a full drunk texting Flexing on the truth, cause you know they'll never change Real, recognize real, that's what you get with Phil and Shane 100's what we do when we're breaking down the bears Fuck a play or a captain, all of the up The tape never lies, the truth, you see We laugh, we lie, so there's no babies like Maybelline Straight to the truth with acumen and facts We got a sad nerd, but he's not just giving nerds that Car crash, big impact like Max Sat Every Wednesday night you got the smartest man and Phil back we know you're smiling like a fat kid with fun dead. We're back better than ever and we're keeping it a hundred. Keeping it a hundred. Keeping it a hundred. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man. Keeping it a hundred. 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 Keeping it a
We're going to talk about that and much more on another great show. We got former Bears center, future Hall of Famer, and dude that's definitely not a liar, always keeping it 100, Olin Krutz is on the show once again. So let's bring on the boys that should be getting interviews, Shane, the smartest man, Marcel, and Draft Dr. Phil. There they are. Draft? What are you talking like, Sharino? <laughs> that accent. <laughs> What's up? Here man? we What's are, up, guys? guys. It Dude, should be like listen. we should be swinging from the jungle gym like we're back in elementary school. <laughs> Instead, we're. I feel like I have a a wait and see anxiety, you know, cape on. It's like, well, oh my god! They don't give us any reason to cheer, man. We're, Jesus. we're expecting at any minute for them to hire the head coach of the Montreal Alouettes. And you know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. That's what we're used to. What's up, TTNL family? The 100 crew is strong. I'm excited about our guest tonight, obviously. Yeah. I mean, if this guy was my guy to be the president. That missing ingredient that we found out, Shane, it's not there. Everyone's <laughs> going to report to a fan. Imagine that. Yeah, we're going to we're going to the GM reports to a fan. Might as well get one of these other micro podcasts. Don't you wish to be in you knew the what that now. interaction was like? You know, George, we're trying to pull off this real intricate three team deal. It's going to involve draft picks and millions of dollars. And, you know, does exactly. he just start sweating? Do his eyes cross? Does he take it with a grain of salt? Who the fuck knows at this point? A grain of salt. Yeah. <laughs> we have witnessed j- exactly what my Uncle Sam told me in 1990. Ted Phillips, as you saw in the open, he has no regrets. Imagine like you wasted four years and you can't keep it a hundred that you made a mistake. That's the lack of integrity that you have at the top. That's the lack of integrity. That's why I said you got to have that president. That's why I wanted Olin. And I'll save my stuff for Olin when he gets here because he fucking blew the chance since he lied to George lied on the Bears. Oh my God. But it's, oh you know, God. they've, I under, I, it seems like the, there's a re, recurring theme here with that era of football players from the Bears. You know, there was obviously issues with Brian Urlacher along the way, issues with, with Lance Briggs. And I'm not saying that these guys are, are all angels along the way, but at some point, where is it not beneficial for you to invite these guys in and sit down with them and break bread and say, Hey, you saw what he said. Yeah. No, no, no. I get it. Oh, I watched it back for a third time. Yeah. I think it's harder everyone, than, we it's harder than watching Matt Nagy's <laughs> offense. It, it really was. I was <laughs> ill. I, I didn't think you could get worse than collaboration. That whole presser. They did it. And they fucking, not only did they do it, remember the fun bunch? Yeah. The Washington Redskins, they'd all celebrate in a bunch and they'd throw their hands up and everyone would jump. They did that. The fun bunch. Now they got a fun bunch deciding who the GM and the coach is. A fan, an accountant, a party planner. This is an episode well, of the George, Sim- George is the a fan. Simpsons. He's not a football guy. That's what he said. We got he doesn't fan, know what the fuck he's doing. A fan, <laughs> an accountant, a party planner, event planner. We got a freaking can of soup. I'm just joking. Soup Campbell. But he's like the players go to him for advice on things. And we got Bill that Polian. Might cha- that might change real quick now. I'll tell you that. Now that they know that he's on this this board, oh, with the you know what he is? He's the snitch. 
Yeah. That's what exactly. I said. Exactly. That's yeah. He's the snitch. He went to ownership and was like, the players are fucking hate Matt Nagy. I'm just telling you, they hate him. We got to get rid of him. That's what that's what Soup Campbell is. He's the snitch. So this is the Bears at the top. This is 1990. I've shared this personal story with all of you. And I and if you're not a patron, you missed all the fireworks and the rants and the breakdowns and analysis of the live pressers and shows that we did covering this team. It was a fillathon on Monday. And it was all yeah, day. Every, every day. I did four shows all day and the national championship. Listen, Chris Zorich said it, Phil. These guys, they don't care. They don't care. I yeah, they don't they they don't live and die with it. They, it's exactly fun to them. You know what I it's mean? It's not it's, you gotta have somebody, as Shane is saying, that loves this game of football. Do you oh, I said this t- three years ago? Three years ago on an old network. I said, how could you be the daughter, the grandson, the son, whatever you are, the father, the son, the Holy Spirit of the Chicago Bears and not study the game, be in the fucking meetings, go to coaches clinics, travel around. That's the problem. You don't know what it takes to win. You didn't even spend time with Grandpa. Grandpa was probably fucking beating the fuck out of George. Can Get you the imagine fuck out of this office? Can you imagine growing up in that, and then for most of your, you know, connection to the, you're, you're working the ticket office. You work. I mean, if I was, how are you not? How are you not a football guy? And your grandfather that's was the, George Harris. Don't know. Like that's how? What I'm saying. How is that? Like I'm a football guy because Phil's my your next dad's door a neighbor. barber. Like right. how the fuck? You're a barber. Fuck, like. George Hallis is your grip. I don't get it. It's it's the most unbelievable thing <coughs> that happens. It it absolutely blows my mind. It, it starts there, yeah, but it doesn't awesome. finish there Mm-mm. because you doubled down on stupidity with Ted. What do you like about Ted? Is Ted? Nope, they're going to report to me, but Ted's going to be involved in deciding. Nothing's changed. And everybody said he's not making football decisions. All the blog yeah, boys, just, right? Just the important ones, you know. And all you, all you fucking dumbasses. Where's Nagy's interviews? Anybody calling up him? Because they know, they know. Where's a, where are you standing, Danahy and company blog boys? Fucking Chewbacca. Where's she at? Fucking don't. They don't know. Nobody's. Be- hey, Matt, come fix our team. <laughs> no. no. No, it's not for a reason. But you collaborated. And I thought, Potash. I, I, I want to get Potash on this show. So, fans, can you reach out to Potash and tell him he's got to get on keeping it 100? Because that's the guy that Cherie's really stood all over out. it. Cherie's yeah. all excited. Cherie, I, I somebody. Potsy's got to come on this show because he's trying to keep it 100. He's trying to keep it 100. And I need verification, Facebook user, that we'll give him, we'll get him a. <laughs> We'll get Patsy a free, we'll get Patsy a free a James Daniels jersey if he comes This out. This is more likely, USFL. Yeah. That's more the, likely. No, the Arena League has called him, according to a source. Come back. Come back to your roots. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you heard today they interviewed. I didn't even hear this guy was being interviewed, Cook. Oh, yeah. I didn't I didn't yep. see that. He was on the. Him and Peterson rap today. Doug Peterson. We're nope. gonna get into that. That's <laughs> nope. a big where's my drop, nope. Jackal, for that. Jesus, you gotta be on top of this shit, Jackal. He's not doing the drops tonight. We need a new drop guy. No, nope. can only imagine the smells coming out of that thing, but you know. <laughs> nope. Doug Peterson, Jackal. Nope. There you go, Jackal. 
That's how you do it. <laughs> Doug Peterson's a big nope. Oh my god. Next thing you know, Dow Loggins. We got Dow Loggins. Nope. Well, I saw people oh. going back and forth about Peterson tonight and earlier today about Doug Peterson, and it's the same thing. Well, he won a Super Bowl. Well, okay, then have Nick Foles be your starter. Then run that shit back. Doesn't I don't care if he won a Super Bowl. Doesn't matter. That was in 2017. It's 2022. Shit nope. Can't. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I'm just a fan. I'm not a football evaluator. But I'm going to evaluate who should be the GM and the coach. Because my mommy said so. <laughs> my mom is very mad. What was it? I don't want her to be mad. So. Yeah. Did someone cut that? Mom is disappointed. But that's the just the little one. You go back and you watch it again and you watch it a third time, Phil, like we both did. It's just yeah. the... The word that sticks out in my brain is implicit, you know, implicitly. I trust him implicitly. Implicit. Oh, when he's talking. Exactly. Yeah, it, we that, need... But that tells you he's he's oh, my doubling God. down on that to let you. Th this, this dude is so entrenched. Olin talked about it on his own podcast. He, Ted Phillips he, is no running podcast. the whole thing. Like, we Ted said it. Billion, Ted Phillips runs the entire building dude top to he bottom. got well, them the fucking stadium deal he got a handshake agreement and you could just tell by the douchebaggery of the upper echelon of them and the stories that we've been told from rashid davis zorich Kruitz, edward all the way down you don't treat your players correctly when they're gone you don't treat your players correctly when they're there you put politics over performance. You continue to be a sham when it comes to understanding that getting a football czar is not equivalent to a magic trick. <laughs> you keep doing the same thing over and over. And Potsy was asking, what's the difference? What's the difference? Ted is still it's... involved in the interview. You've added a few faces of color to try to be. And, and, and the thing that I couldn't stand most is the Jeff Dickerson intro. You, you had weeks to do that. On Here is the presser of firing Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace football. And you try to use somebody's oh he was he was but listen he knew that he was going to infuriate the media but this was the this was the buttering up portion of the press conference exactly. i'm Let's gonna soften, soften the landing them up. exactly yeah. it wasn't yeah. the time no Are you it was that that part fucking, of it that it part Phil, I, you and i talked before this started and we were all excited because they made we felt like they made the correct move getting rid of matt Nagy, getting rid of ryan pace I called you and I'm like, hey, they did it. And you're like, bro, I can't believe it. And I said, now we wait to see the presser. You basically said, and I'll quote you, now we got to pray that Ted Phillips isn't a part of the presser. And I go, yeah, that's a great point. And you then stated that Brad Biggs or someone said, George will be at the podium alone taking yeah. questions. And we were like, wow, they really figured it out. Four seconds before, four seconds before the presser, Shane goes, oh, my God. Oh, my God. They're going to have Ted Phillips there. <laughs> I go, what? Not wasn't yeah. he there. He was in a fucking Zoom call upstairs in his cushy little pad because he's running shit from up top. Shit runs downhill downhill ted is a liar you had an opportunity do you have any regrets there's so many lies within it as aretha was saying there's so well, many lies george came out and said that himself and and then ted you know do we we don't regret we don't regret, regret hiring those guys well how could you, you should exactly. you didn't you didn't do what you brought that supposedly you brought them here for they didn't that's do why it. I put, 
<laughs> they didn't win a playoff game. They had one winning season. Sucked. One season of 500. Your offense <laughs> regressed. Regressed. From what, week seven? Why are you firing these guys that you think are so good? Why are you? That's the point. Because, Phil, you have to think about it in their terms. Listen, their, Matt Nagy was, what, 34 and 31? In Ted and George's world, they've lost so fucking much. That's like the mountaintop. That's the unattainable to them. I love they threw those two playoffs. Yeah. They're in the playoffs twice. Great. The fucking, you backed into the playoffs. Yeah. When they added another year, you wouldn't have made it. You were eight and eight, eight and eight, and fought six and 11 this year. You were 12 and four with Vic Fangio and the turnover squad. Let's get. Let's not get it twisted here. We all can. Ryan and Matt are men of character. They are both, like Ted, outstanding leaders. I've been. Yeah, they're outstanding leaders. I trust Ted implicitly. Ted, Ted is the ginormous problem. Ted is the guy that doesn't have regrets and goes on to say what he felt. Let's watch Ted again, for those of you just tuning in. The hiring of Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, I don't regret that. Lies, lies, and more lies, and lies on top of lies. As an organization, we had conviction on this quarterback and his special attributes. Um, they both brought a lot to the Bears. Huh. Ultimately, on the field, the results weren't where we wanted it to, but um, never take coughs or mix it up with iodine and lie. I think they've checked a lot of the boxes. Fail, suck, useless, blech, and just put um. You can't ask for better leaders. You can't ask for better forward thinkers. Fantastic. Brilliant. You can't ask for people that um, gave their all, had great work ethic, were humble. And we're going to look for a lot of those same qualities. And hopefully with uh, Bill's uh, vast expertise. Concept-wise, his run game doesn't match with his pass game. Uh, in the technicalities of of uh, coaching strategy and uh, valuation processes, that that's going to uh, add a nice added benefit to our search and going to help us find the right uh, Yeah. Dude, yeah. you can't make that up if you even try to make it up. You got an interesting – It didn't matter on the field. Interesting comment. It's the only here. place it matters, Shay. Phil, do you want to address – or we both can – the Bears, Bears fire the dude that has been top 10 in drafting for the past half decade, Ryan Pace, and hire a guy that has not been in the NFL for 10 years, which called Lamar Jackson to be a wide receiver one and a half years before Lamar was the youngest ever NFL MVP. So I, I'm not sure what – I think he's upset how you're great. Ryan Pace, Pace, top Ryan half. Pace, top 10. I don't know. I, I guess show me that list. Maybe it's his personal list. I, I'm not sure. What? Maybe, maybe <laughs> Patron Two Twenty Two has a burner account in here. I don't. I don't know. Top ten. I've never, and I've been probably a bigger pace supporter than anybody on this network throughout. I would agree until here lately. But to say that he's been top ten, hmm, I'd like to see those facts. I'm just a fan. I'm not a football evaluator. Exactly. He's just a fan. That I mean, owns when he's the team. Like Ted, Ted Phillips is out there. The guys that they just launched, the guys that they just fired, they gave more respect to than they did their Hall of Fame center that played That's every single saying. game like a fucking warrior, played through injuries. I want you – I, I, I really just, think Ted's – I put a bunch of little drops and jokes in there to try to just do it so you can see it, look up, for God's sake. The one thing that matters in football is the field. That's it. 
he goes on to list all these things, great leaders and this, that, and the other. That goes to show you the guy that's running it is lost. So yeah, all our faith, all our faith as Bears fans goes into Bill Poley and making the right call. That's it. That's it. Because George and fucking Ted are those two fathers that can't put together a goddamn Lego. I will toy. say this, though, Phil. Initially, when I heard the name Bill Polian, I was very upset because I was thinking, you know, old school hasn't been involved in the league, you know, but you forget about the contacts and him staying active. You know, he's been involved in serious satellite radio and with the NFL and stuff like that. In terms of the guys that they've reached out to for, for the general manager positions, mm -hmm. I've been in, this is me keeping it 100, I've been very impressed because it's a wide array of everything. It's not, you know, the good old boy network. Right. It's not just scout based. Well, I told you. There's an analytical sense in there. And I mean, I'm not saying that it has to be one or the other there's got to be a combination of in in 2022 there's got to be a combination of both there's got to be a give and take on both avenues and i have my feelings where i think that this is headed you and i have talked about it and we'll end up talking about it more here later but i've been impressed with the gm list now the important part is is it going to be polian pulling the trigger george said that it's him publicly to show that he has the power that he has the juice He's and that's him fan, that's him putting out there that ted is not doing it that's all that means that's all that is but to me but ted really is yeah to me it's it's really bill polian and on who he is going to going to hire 21 seasons Puts it back up as team president, 24 different quarterbacks, 15 at or below 500 seasons, 13 third or last place division finishes, 10 seasons with a losing record, six playoff appearances, five division championships, three playoff wins, one Super Bowl appearance, and zero Super Bowl wins under Ted Phillips. That was addressed and it was skipped over. Ted Phillips is the weatherman at your local news station. Ted Phillips doesn't have any qualifications to hire anybody within football hey, in regards because he doesn't know football. So Willie, therefore, Willie, let me continues I'll, to happen. We'll start this right off from Jump Street, Willie. I know that you don't care for our network, and I know you want to do your little game in the in the in the chat like always, and play the, the public little old me game like you do. But you tried, and you're not us. So that's strike number one for you. I tell the fucking truth here. It's not about being negative or fucking positive all the time. I could give two fucks. When I responded to you tonight on Twitter, that was not a compliment, bro. Just so, I'm just saying. You can play your games and go cry and say little old me that's fine but do your thing man do your thing go oh, to bring that fat ass <laughs> oh jesus yeah now what was i saying he interrupted me i was saying that he's not qualified to be doing anything other than organizing ways to make money for the McCaskies to get this stadium deal on Arlington, that, which they don't have, they haven't closed yet. Maybe Nagy can help them with the mortgage and close on that with his, his past real estate license. He that talked, stuff. He, he, he talked, he was talking about closing yeah. terms on closing, closing terms yeah. on closing. The reality is, Ted Phillips should have no part in this, but George trusts him implicitly. This is a problem. This is someone who can't go out in front of the world of Bears fans 
and speak the truth like we do here. Like I own if I'm wrong about something. I own. We we went on how many times obviously we a patron. We went out of our way it. to say right. the Bears blog. He called it. As hard as we, and I don't like the dude, as hard as we are, you give credit where credit is due. Don't play that little old me bullshit. Like you got some fucking football knowledge that nobody else has. Go what? out there and make the right move by saying, you know what? We messed up. We messed up with Mitch. We messed up with Pace. We messed up with Nagy. There's nothing wrong with that. That's healthy. But to sit there and lie, it's just, it gives you no trust going forward. You trust them? You only have hope that Polian is taking this by the horn. And going back, my Uncle Sam Ritigliano, as I said before on this network, he said Ernie Accorsi was a shoe salesman. He should have no business. Him and Mike Lombardi should have no business in anything of football. Helping the Bears is a detriment to the Bears. And we saw he was right. He said the opposite about Bill Polian. He said Bill Polian is a very knowledgeable man who has nothing but the truth, nothing but what is going to be best and hardest for them to hear. Well, and that's... I pump the brakes on that a little bit because i i am a serious xm subscriber for you know way over a decade and i've listened to bill polian plenty on there spout some bullshit especially when it comes to the goat tom brady tom, he doesn't like he's tom? like yeah we oh, oh yeah that we, we had a first round grade on tom but we didn't draft him because we had peyton well tom brady didn't go to pick 199 you at you have plenty of picks in between. Make them a, make them a backup. If you had a first round grade, you pick him in the fourth round. If he's still there, that's, exactly. That's but, what a great. But GM he came would out do. and said that publicly, and then the especially the, as a quarterback, the Lamar Jackson thing is legit. Bill Polian, that's part of public record. He's a wide receiver. He's not a quarterback. No, he was. Wrong he does have it. He's got a long. We'll keep energy. Yeah. Coach T, please don't give this guy any yeah. more comments. You don't I'll keep the up. energy up real tough. Real tough. Real talk. Because real yeah. recognizes real. We don't keyboard tough guy this shit. Trying to keep it 100 on everything we do. I think the amount of people that watch the show, that invest every Wednesday night and make it a appropriate time as well as the guests that want to come on here and speak the truth that's the reality ttnl could stand for itself you're a hater you're a fucking troll that's what you are keep that's a keep it at 100 keep trolling or keep on stepping get to stepping gangsters what's up guys go watch another show with matt Nagy. You're you are a big supporter of Matt Nagy. Now what? Now what? Try to try to switch it. Yeah, anyway, I get yeah. fired up with bullshit. Don't fucking come with untruths. I'll keep it a hundred. Everybody's gonna make mistakes. Show that real truth. Show that real truth. The real truth for me has always been Olin Krutz was my is my guy to solve this because I knew the pussification of the bears started with Ted Phillips, and George McCaskey. It true. It proved to be more true. It proved to be more true. I agree. Avon been with us all, all your Avon's been supporting us all our time. I, I blame Jackal again. He's only putting up the negative po comments. You got something to say about this? I ain't doing shit. He never does shit. <laughs> <laughs> Patron 420. That's right. He just made his own drop and he didn't even know it. <laughs> he doesn't even beautiful. know it. He doesn't even know it. Oh, my God. Uh-oh.
We didn't even put the intro for this guy. He doesn't even need an intro. Every We all love this guy. Listen, I'm pissed because the intro never even got up. And I'm a big snob when it comes to production and intros. But you're right. We don't have enough time for his introduction. Maybe I'll upload it as we're interviewing and then go back and pretend now. Listen, I'll give my own off the top of the head introduction. Because I keep it 100, just like the show said. I don't agree with Olin Krutz all the time, but I knew that the pussification of the Chicago Bears needed somebody that was going to speak truthfully in the thinking of pushing the Bears forward. Not constantly in neutral, but forward. Learning, because he's been in the building for so many years. He doesn't have to be a businessman. He doesn't have to be an accountant. He had to be a presence that loved the Chicago Bears more so than their own leaders, fans in the building. This man would go down to the weight room, to the equipment man, the trainer, and measure their worth. What does this team mean to you? Because as we on this network speak for the city, for the fans, I knew, that's why I said it before anybody on record, that this would be the president. I got a lot of pushback from a lot of blog boys and people saying, no, Olin ain't ready. He, Yeah, he's the guy I wanted because I knew he would do it right and he'd find the right coach and GM. How many, seven Pro Bowls, 13 seasons at center, number 57, drafted out of Washington, the Hawaiian, the toughest motherfucker you're ever going to see. He made guys that are 6'7", 345 pounds and six inches taller than him, weak in the knees with fear. And he made an owner talk smack and pissed down his leg probably in the process <laughs> here he is you know him from nbc sports you see him on the score on the after show with my boy david kaplan and lance briggs and alex brown he's our captain olin cruz <laughs> there he is <laughs> what's up guys man thanks for having me you know i love your guys show <laughs> Uh, happy to be on. Uh, quite the introduction. <laughs> hey, I got to introduce you the right way. Yeah. I apologize. Uh, I know you've been, this is now your fifth time, I believe, on our show. For and sure. we love having you on, but, you know, we saw what happened and that's where we got to start. Mm -hmm. Just because I want to get it out. I know you're having to deal with probably a media circus, but. <laughs> it's been a long day. I, I, I've watched <laughs> every place Olin has been today. And I'm like, oh, man. I, Olin, I I'm going to play thing, the though. clip. Uh -huh. Then we're going to talk about it. And then we're going to get into everything else. Let's All watch right. it. You could react to it in real time. I'm just a fan. I'm not a football evaluator. I know, George. You're not a fan. You're a fan. Here we go. George on Olin. I've learned over the years to take just about anything that Olin says with a grain of salt. And I look forward to hearing that story again and hope he includes it in his Hall of Fame induction speech. So you're saying that it's not true? Uh, that's the way it is sometimes with Olin don't get the whole story. And Ola knows what the story is. There it is. Now, Olin, it's mm -hmm. not every day that you have a firing of a GM and a coach and the conversation be goes into a future Hall of Fame former player who mm -hmm. cares what it seems more about this franchise than they do. But that being said, let's start mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Harry Heastan has come out and said, as well as Ryan Pace, that this is true. Mm -hmm. Have you received any apology from the McCaskies? 
No, I haven't, and, and I don't expect to. And like you guys talked about, uh, talked about this all day. So I've been talking about it for a while. But but just you know, the the thing about saying uh, it wasn't, an, if you say it wasn't an accurate story, we've talked. I've said that many times. It's one thing is all to say that o- Olin, whatever he says, you can't believe is another thing to say, especially when you don't really know me at all. And, and you know, anybody who wants to hear my response to this can. I, I've talked about it to nauseum now because it deserves to be talked about when someone says that about your character, about who you are as a person, and they really don't know you, right? So um, simple, if you're a leader, uh, if, you, if you run the building, a lot of guys in that building have my phone number. Uh, you pick up the phone and you call if you hear the story and you don't like it that much. But um, they, they got together, Ted Phillips, uh, Scott Hagel, and George McCaskey got together and decided that, that was the way they were going to handle that situation. I don't uh, give them a pass at all uh, that, that he just said that and he didn't really know what he was saying and he was trying to play around. And no, that's, that's not what happened there. What oh, happened he there is they said, right. yeah, they, they said exactly, they did exactly what they wanted to do uh, because I'm on radio, I'm on TV and I'm constantly analyzing them from a perspective of a guy who's been in the building for 13 years and they're trying to poke holes in my credibility. Right. So that's what they that's what he wanted to do there. Uh, George is a former lawyer and, and he's smart and, knows, and he knows what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly why he said those things. Um, I don't I did not hear from them. I don't expect to hear from from the McCaskies. Um, George is the chairman of the Chicago Bears. George is a McCaskey. He speaks for the McCaskey. So from my point of view, that's the way that they feel about me for whatever reason. Right. Um, I've said many times George was not a part of the football side when I was there. Mm-hmm. I've maybe had two or three conversations uh, with the man in my whole life. Uh, I haven't seen him or talked to him except for to say hello when I see him at events uh, in since I retired, which would now be 11 years from the Chicago Bears. Uh, so that's how long he hasn't really known me. Uh, it's fascinating that you can speak about someone in that right. context uh, like we all know. Uh, but but it's, I guess he's talking about the guy he sees on TV, the guy he hears on the radio, uh, the guy that I, that analyzes them. I guess he disagrees with the things that I say, which is fine to say I disagree with him. I don't think that the story is accurate. That would be one thing. And then we could go find Harry and Ryan Pace like I did. Um, you know, uh, Ryan Pace and I still have a good relationship, even though I have to criticize him and critique him a lot. Right. And we all know my relationship with Harry. He stands. Um, so I, you know, obviously you call them and you say, man, maybe I didn't get my story right. Maybe I was wrong. No, my story was mm-hmm. right. Uh, um, I did get that offer from Harry Heastan. Uh, that was asked to me on the score. The score asked me, Olin, have you ever got a job? Would you take a job with the Bears? Have you ever had a job with the Bears? I answered the question. Uh, obviously, they don't think it was the truth. But instead of just saying that, that I have to find out the, the story or the story is not accurate, Instead, he said, uh, you shouldn't believe anything that comes out of Olin's mouth, which to me is an attack on my character. So obviously I've come back at them. Um, I think that everybody should defend themselves if someone attacks the fact that your word, everything you say is taken with a grain of salt. So I answered that many a times. Uh, My answer will continue to be the same. And and, um, if I hear from them, I would be surprised if I did. I don't expect to because, like I said, I think that that's exactly what they meant to say. It's exactly what they got together. They had to know that that question was coming. And that's the way he wanted to handle it as a former lawyer. I was doing the live show on our patron watching this real quick, Shane. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. And Shane could tell you. We we all just I, fucking froze. We Kind of like George did for a and second got, when they, they said, so this yeah. isn't the truth. Phil and I were like. I is this really I, fucking happening? I couldn't believe it. I got it. goosebumps. And then I got a, after it was over, I went to your defense and I got emotional because all of my hope was lost because you're the guy that I pointed would be the penicillin to this pussification, to this bullshit, to the manipulation and to the frustration of the fans. You're the guy because I, I see you speaking like i speak maybe that's just bias to me we obviously me and you debate on things but we're trying to better the bears and i think both of us 
love this football. All of us love this football team. Right. And I think you said something that's so it needs to be addressed tonight. The fact that the owner took shots at you mm-hmm. to your character, your persona, mm-hmm. and Olin still loves the Bears and wants mm-hmm. them to succeed, says everything why I'm right. It's people like you that can't go into their environment and shake things up is why they continue to lose. Well, a, I mean, me, me, and George can, me and George can disagree on a lot of things, right? And we can disagree on that story, and we can disagree on um, the fact that you have to take everything I say with a grain of salt. We can disagree on the fact that um, he probably disagrees with a lot of things I say about him. But one thing I'm sure we both agree on is we want the Bears to win football games. Uh, we want them to hire the right general manager. We want them to hire the right coach. Uh, would love for them to get that right, get that culture right, that standard right in that building. Um, you can disagree. You can not even like each other and still want the same goal for the city of Chicago, for the state of Illinois, so we can enjoy a good football team, team that gets to the playoffs, a team that wins games. Uh, so that that can – like that can also be true in everything that was said, right? So all that stuff can be true. All the things I say from my point of view can be true. All the things George says from his point of view probably can be true too. But as far as the Chicago Bears, can they get the right head coach? Can we get Roquan Smith uh, to be an all pro co- consistently? Can we get Jalen Johnson to an all pro level? Can we get Eddie Goldman back dominating the middle of that line? Can we get Justin Fields to become that quarterback that Chicago has yes. been longing for for years. Uh, that is, that's one thing that I'm hoping that me and George and McCaskey and whoever else in that building that everybody has in common. Olin, I was listening to your, your podcast that you do with J-Mac, Jason McKee, and I would encourage all of our fans, if you're not subscribed to that, please do so. No Name Podcast. We love please. it here as a network. I love j One of the things that I wrote down when I was listening to to it today was that you said you texted Scott Hagel. Did you get a response from him via text at all? I did. I I did get a response and I'll keep that between us. Right. And, um, you know, Scott Hagel obviously works there and I just let him know like, okay, man, I mean, I guess that's how you guys feel. Yeah. Right. And he he just, he said, um, you know, do you, would you like to talk to me? And I said, no, not really. You know, I just, that's, I'm good. I I understand now I, I have, it's a. Uh, um, it's not like Olin was wrong in that story or whatever it may be. I don't think. Oh, I don't think Olin's a very good analyst or whatever it may be. Sure. But it was more of like Olin. He, you can't. You can't trust anything he says from a guy who doesn't really know me. So yeah, I, I did reach out to him and, and and really just ended it with you know um, hope hope you and your family are doing well. Right. Yeah. This is really all you can say at the end of that. Right. Because uh, you know. It, it turns into something you don't want it to be. Right. Uh, this is this is really is at the end of the day uh, a football team. It gets everybody emotional. We all want to see the Bears win, but it is a football team. It is a football game. Uh, there's a lot bigger things going on. People have kids. People have families. So I just left it at. I, I hope you and your family are doing well. So to play off of that, and like I said, I know you're gonna you're gonna be honest, and I I'm just always trying to to figure these things out, and I'm not there directly involved. But do you think? maybe taking that step even though you're not in the wrong do you think maybe taking that step and talking to him would maybe open up the doors for this to be the starting point for the the chicago bears organization to take some accountability and to maybe treat the former players in a different way that maybe it's going to take maybe it's going to take olin talking to him and, right. And, and, and to be honest uh, with you guys, and I've said this a few times yeah. now, when 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 I went down this road of nicknaming them the four horsemen, yeah. talking about, you know, uh, uh, Ryan Pace, yeah. and they put Ryan Pace in there, too. And, and, and uh, um, Ted Phillips and George McCaskey and Scott Hagel is because I me and Jay, Jason McKee were talking and I said, look, yeah. I'm tired of talking about the same position. Yeah, I'm tired of talking about the general manager. I'm tired of talking about the coach. I said, if we're going to be honest, and we and we're, that's what we say about our podcast, we keep it real. Yeah, like, you guys keep it one hundred. We say that about mm-hmm. our podcast. We say we we'll keep it real. I said, then we have to call out what we really think is the problem mm-hmm. in that building. And I've said many a times, 
that if you you can you can, you can Google snap decision Olin Cruz, yeah, it'll come up in Google. And David Hall wrote the story. I said in 2009, mm-hmm. while I was still on the Chicago Bears, while I was a player in the locker room, I said that they asked me if they should fire Lovey Smith. I said that the problems start a lot higher than Lovey Smith. And they said, what do you mean? I said, the Bears need to be fixed from top to bottom. I said that while I was still a player on the Bears. Uh, I had to meet with uh, Jerry Angelo after saying that. I had to meet with Ted Phillips after saying that. So th- those things, these feelings have been going on for a while. And I said, look, I'm just going to talk about it already. I'm going to talk about where I think they really need to fix the Hallis Hall, where they really need to fix that building, yeah. because I wanted to talk about uh, ownership and how ownership can affect the locker room, how it can affect the players, how it can affect everything you're trying to do there, how when you're at Hallis Hall as a coach or a player, things seem to be an uphill battle a lot of the times. So we talked about it a lot, and I knew, and I told Jay Matt, this is going to ruffle a lot of feathers up there. People are going to be pissed yep. off, and it seems like they are, right? And like you're saying, I don't know. I, I don't know if it'll lead to change. It seems like they're really just kind of trying to be mad and even push us farther away now. So yeah. who knows? Who knows what will happen there? You hope uh, that if we just constantly keep saying this is what you guys need to fix because it doesn't seem like they think they have to fix what they need to fix because, look, what they basically told you at the end of the press conference is nothing's changing. Exactly. Right. Everything's the exact same way that we brought Bill Polian in. Yeah, That's they exactly swapped out Ernie Acorsi for Bill Polian. Right. Yeah, I mean, everybody has respect for Bill Polian, right? Who's I mean, a Bill better Polian. football yeah. guy than Ernie Acorsi ever? He's a straight shooter, too, now. Bill yes. Polian will tell you exactly yep. what yep. you got to do. But the problem is, as the year goes on and problems come up, who's there to fix it? Yeah, who's not there Bill. to help the coach? <laughs> yeah. uh, ain't you know, the one, of the things I, one of the things I keep talking about is, one of the most interesting parts of that press conference, I thought, was when George said that Nagy came to him and asked him about Justin Fields, yep. and he said he was uncomfortable. <laughs> and I said, "That's that's that's not good, right?" Like, that is it? As an owner, he's not asking you to, to tell him what to do. He just wants to have a conversation, man. Just put up a grease board and put up the positives and the negatives of why Justin Fields should play and why he shouldn't play, and what do you think? And just bounce ideas off each other, like uh, when we go at it about Sam Mustafer or whoever is on that team. And who should be replaced and who we think is good and and, and where do guys fit in? Where where does the puzzle and and then you get to an answer. And sometimes exactly. you don't get to an answer you like, but at least you get to an answer. That's right. Listen, I didn't bring Olin Kruitz on today because of the controversy. Olin, I'll say this to your face, as I've said it. I mean, I don't know who could champion you more because I wanted you in that position that quote magician position that the footballs are that they said that is so important and essential when you're admitting in a presser that you're just a fan but the gm's reporting to a fan who doesn't know about football i think the biggest neglect is that you're the grandson of george hallis and you haven't studied the game gone into coaches clinics gone and sit in and watch how these guys teach and to see the change instead olin who by the way you're the best analyst of the bears on television that's my truth i appreciate it yeah i mean no that's uh, my truth i'm not blowing too, smoke but, yeah. i'm not blowing smoke i'm telling you because a you do keep it 100 keep it real on your show with jay mac you know the game and you know what it takes to win, and you know the organization. Even called out Adam Hogan as special teams coaching on the on the, on the podcast. I was dying. Adam does a great. Adam does a great. Yeah, job. No, I know. Really, I know. What did I he miss? It. Someone got out of their lane or something? Yeah. In the well, you know, sometimes listen. I coach little league football for a while. Sometimes the guys don't run where they're supposed to be running. But uh, uh, Adam, uh, I like to kill with Adam a lot. But but he, you know, he, he volunteers his time to help Jason McKee yeah. up there at uh, Carmel Catholic. But uh, it is fun. It's fun to tease. Oh, because yeah. look, we all learn. Like sometimes, a lot of us talk about football, but when you're coaching it, man, it's not as easy as it oh, sounds yeah. sometimes to break it down. So uh, it's been fun to, to to watch him learn that about the game of football, like we all have. Yeah. Let me go back now. Ted Phillips is a part in this. Mm-hmm. We've said for years on this network and prior to it that Ted is running this whole thing, and that's why it's a disgrace and disheveled. My Uncle Sam Ritigliano, head coach of the Browns, told me in 1990, the problem with the Bears is that they have an accountant running the team. This is 1990, 
that he taught. And I didn't believe him. He's 89 years old now and still sharp as a tack like that and told me, Bill Polian will fix this. And we, And that's all we can hope. But that being said, Ted Phillips is asked, do you have any regrets about Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy? And he says, no. Mm-hmm. Do you have a problem with that? Well, I, Ted, like you said, right, I think they hired him in 1983 as like accountant controller uh, right. of the football team. And then uh, in 1999, I think it was, they put him as president and CEO, but he's been in charge and kind of around there since th- for that long, right? And the Bears right. haven't had a lot of success in those years with him making decisions, especially in the football side of building. But uh, I've said many times, businessmen don't win on the football field, right? So in his mind, he probably thinks that you may think I'm losing, but I feel like I'm doing pretty damn good, right? I, I feel like uh, we're heading in the right direction here business-wise, and they don't have a strong football uh, personality or an opinion in the building on, look, uh, we got to get this side of the building going because this is what this would mean a lot to the city. It means a lot to the people of Illinois, the, the city of Chicago, uh, get this moving in the right direction. Obviously, look, you just have to put up the Bears' results since Ted has been in charge hiring coaches, hiring general managers since they've had to answer to him. And you really don't have to make an argument about the fact that Ted is not doing the job he's supposed to be doing because the results, if you put it up on a board, are right there. And it's almost like when we talked about should Coach Nagy still be calling offensive plays and you just put up the number of uh, how much points they score a game since week 14 (laughs) of 2018, and the answer was no. Same thing with Ted. So Ted still be making decisions at Hallisall? No, but I don't know. I, I, I assume we see that the Bears franchise now is worth in the billions. So that's his number. That's his goal. That means he's being successful. Yeah, wait till they get to Arlington Heights. That's only going to almost double. <laughs> That's right. the... The, only, the only time they're comfortable in that press conference yeah. is when they're talking about Arlington Heights. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, you, you, you get to see a little bit of that. Uh, they, you know, we heard George McCaff say, I'm just a fan. Uh, but then they, they're going to answer to me. It, it, nothing has changed there. George right. is still going to talk to Ted about what the general manager said. And it's, they're still answering to Ted and George. So, Olin, just to to move away from this a little bit, I said the you know, just like with what you had to deal with, Bears fans have been kicked in the nuts repeatedly for for decades now. It seems like, but I was talking to Phil. I'm like, you know, we never we didn't really know how they were going to handle this. You know, if it was just going to be Nagy, if they were going to move Pace to a different position, well, then they moved them both out. And Phil and I were talking on the phone. I'm like. Now we have to watch the pre- press conference and hope that Philip Ted Phillips at least isn't a part of it at all, Phil. Because if he is, then just like you said, Olin, nothing has changed. The only thing that has changed is Bill Polian replaces Ernie Accorsi in in the grand scheme of things. But the way that this is developed and and the the just the head coach. I'm not going to ask. I want to ask you about the GMs, but the head coach mm-hmm. candidates that they've that they've you know, they have the list for, do you have a leader and only, you know, that, that you like the best or somebody that you, you hope maybe they, that they bring in. You guys know football, right. As yeah. well as I do. And here's the thing about these head coaches that, that come up for interviews at this time. The, these guys are the cream of the crop, man. They yeah. are as good as it gets. You get to the NFL and you start getting head coaching um, interviews. You're, you're a good football coach. And like you guys know, to pick the guy that you would want, to pick the guy to keep calling the leader. And, and you know, uh, eventually you have to define what, what is a leader to you. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by when you say, I need a leader of men? How do you become a leader? How do you lead a building? How would you lead an NFL building, which is totally different than leading a college building, oh, yeah. which is totally exactly. different than leading high school kids? Totally different, right? So when someone says to me, I need a leader here, I always ask them, define leader for me. In your, in your mind, what would a leader do? Well, and the thing about time. the Chicago Bears guys, and like you guys know, this is a premier city to coach football in, man. This town, you want to be a football coach, this is the town you want to be in. This is where you want to coach football. Uh, you do have to overcome some of the ownership problems, obviously, at Hallis Hall. But this is where George Hallis started off. The city of Chicago loves their football team. The people of Illinois love the Bears. There's no better place in the NFL to be the head football coach of the NFL franchise in right here. This is a premier job in the NFL. But the guy does have to 
overcome some things in that building. We have to. The Bears, what you want them to do is put up on a board and say, man, this has been our problem now for years. How do we fix this problem? And ask him, how would you fix this problem? How do we get these guys, the James Daniels, if they do resign them, the Cody Whitehairs, the Tevin Jenkins, the Mooney? How do we get them to the Pro Bowl? How do we get them to an all-pro level? How do I get Cole Komet playing better football? How do I get Eddie Jackson back to 2018? What do you think about Justin Fields? And I watched two games with you. What kind of scheme would you put him in? Now, let me ask you this. I'm going to put a Baltimore film and say, look, this is him versus Don Wink Martindale. He's confused here. What play would you call? How do I get him out of this confusion, right? Let me walk you down to the weight room, bro. Call, tell me about your strength staff. Tell me about what you're going to put in here. How are you going to bring Eddie Goldman back to the premier nose guard in the NFL where he dominates people? How are you going to get him back? So these are just questions you got to ask. And then you got to ask him, what does leading mean to you? How are you going to lead these guys? What is, what is your definition of leadership? How do you get these guys to follow you? And you have to like all of those answers. And if you don't, he's not the guy. Yeah, and that's the part with leadership. It's hard. You're doing that over a Zoom or an interview. And I mean, you may you n- may need two, three months to figure out if that's the, you know, after you've already hired him. That's the, that's the, that's well, the it shouldn't. Yeah, it no, shouldn't. no, no, I, let, I, let, I get let, it. Let me give all the listeners the secret in the NFL, okay? This is as simple as it can get to leading people in the NFL. You have to make them better. Yep. It's not yelling. It's not screaming. You got to help them get to their second contract. You got to help them play good football. When they're injured, you got to help them get healthy. You got to put them in a position to make plays. That's leading in the NFL. That's how they buy in to you. That's how they start listening to what you're saying. Because all of a sudden, what you're saying to them, man, what this guy tells me, it works. Because guess what everybody's trying to do in the NFL? They're trying to put food on their table. So you got to get them playing good football. And if you're not, no one cares what you're saying. No one cares how much you're yelling. No one cares how many sprints you make them run. If you're not making them better at their job, they don't care what you're saying. So that's what you have to do. So if a coach wants the, the answer for leadership in the NFL and he wants a job, tell him, play your guy's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do every week. I, I, no I club ran, dub here. There's no club dub in this this. uh Building after six did you, losses. Did you guys see uh, uh, Tomlin dancing oh, in the locker room? Awesome. That was awesome. That was great. That was awesome. That was great. Yeah. That's that when awesome. you dance. Yeah, that's that when, when you dance. dance. When you make the playoffs. When right? you make yeah. the playoffs and you've accomplished a goal that you set out as a team, that's when you dance. No doubt. To lose six in a row and beat a one win uh, Detroit team, there's no celebration. That's a loss as a leader. Do you think? That showcase, because we had regression, collaboration, Mm -hmm. obsession, BU. We had all these quirky corporate slogans, Olin. Mm -hmm. Do you think now that leaked out leader and they asked George, can you give us what that means? And he's like, toughness. And he goes down this list, right? Do you think that was what they took away most from Nagy's? locker room and his culture that he wasn't the leader that they they had hoped yeah i, I don't know it's almost like they, they, we got a bunch of buzzwords at that press conference kind of what they thought everybody wanted to hear right and that's why i always think to myself if i if you're there when they're saying these words you got to ask them to define it right like we need a leader well define leader right define that for me uh, uh, we need, you know, gritty. Define gritty for me. Define opportunist. What does opportunistic mean to you? It's just so you know, they're not just throwing words at you, right? I need, I need to know uh, uh, what actually what you think because uh, we heard the whole time from Ryan Pace and those guys. They thought that the strength, the coaching staff was the strength of their building. So basically, they're taught that the leaders were the strength of their building. We heard that they all believed in each other the year before the collaboration. We heard all of that stuff. And it didn't work out. And, and like George said, he said, look, uh, we have to show you guys because we know you're not going to believe what we're saying because we're saying the same things. It's basically exactly. what he's saying. We really haven't changed much. So until we actually win football games, uh, it, it doesn't really matter what we're saying. He's right. He's right. It's going to be hard. Uh, uh, you know, they're going to get, get a general manager, uh, a popular guy, a guy who thinks everybody thinks who has a great track record. You don't become a general manager in the NFL because you don't know what you're doing, right? You don't right. get these interviews because you don't have a good track record. Except in Chicago. I don't yeah, know. You, yeah, you don't, you don't get an interview. 
You don't yeah, interview as a head coach if, if you don't if you're not good in your scheme. So these guys are going to be good at what they do. They're just going to have to answer the other questions in the building. But that's let's start right there. That's I don't think you even realize the indictment because Ryan Pace is Ryan Pace worked his way up. We get it, his story. But then he was never a GM, mm -hmm. so you know he took that transition from pro personnel, whatever his title was in New Orleans. But Matt Nagy never had coach on any level was never the season long offensive coordinator he was just a good old boy network hey this is Andy Reid you guys got to hire this guy and he probably is a nice guy and said all the right things but you and I know and you said it here this guy's never had any kind of concepts offensively that worked it was like they were just plays just plays. So I hope that I believe actually that Bill Polian, that guy in the room is going to help because they, they have five people. Let's talk about those five people, Ted mm -hmm. Phillips, George McCaskey, Tanisha Drake, Wade, Tanisha Wade, who was events planner, but now she's got promoted and you got soup Campbell. Mm -hmm. who basically was the snitch. He was the guy helping everyone. And he went back to, this is what's going on. So Soup Cam, I don't even, do you know Soup? Did you have any relationship? I don't. I, I don't know Tanisha or Soup. Um, happy that they get a chance to sit in the room, man. Well, what an opportunity for them to sit through a process of hiring a brand new football coach or head coach uh, in the NFL to get to learn about that process. But like you're saying, when you hear about the room, uh, Bill Polian is who you're putting all your, putting right. all your chips behind Bill, man. He's not a bad guy to put your chips behind, right? So uh, hopefully everybody in that room who doesn't have experience or who, who have made bad decisions is has a notepad and a pen out and is listening to the things that Bill is saying and the, and the questions that he is asking and how he's trying to get to the answers because here's the problem. Like you're saying, I think Bill's going to get to the right guy. I think they are going to hire a good football coach. They are going to hire a good general manager. And like I said before, this is an excellent job to have. Like you guys know, the fan base loves the Chicago Bears. Uh, they do have a pretty decent roster. If they can get their offense playing better football, get a better scheme in there with concepts, feed Montgomery the ball. I love watching that kid run, run the rock. Uh, find a way to throw passes off your run game. Find a way to put the ball in the end zone. You know, things like that. I think Bill will get to that stuff. Uh, the people around him, though, you have to consume as much knowledge as you can get because once he leaves, once he installs somebody, the building is yours again. And you have to help these people succeed because here's the thing the Chicago Bears have to get to. They have to get to the point of where we're developing players and we're developing coaches and we're developing executives. And then they, the whole building has to be developing these people. So when you get to the point where you want where yep. you're good, where you want your team to be and people are coming to pick those guys out of your job. You have people ready to replace them. You can't let guys like Brandon Staley out of the building. You can't get like guys like Ballard out of the building, guys like Dodd right. out of the building, guys like Morocco Brown out of the building. They go somewhere else and they seem to have some success. So hopefully uh, we can get that going here. Hopefully Bill Polian can get them to show them how to create that standard, that culture in their own building. Isn't that a little scary? Uh, you know, you, you brought up some good points. Like, you want to ask these questions about what your vision. We have one person in the room to ask about that vision, right? Like, we're putting an awful lot on Bill, and I don't disagree, right? Like, the guy's way connected. But, I mean, one one what is Ted and George going to ask that's, that's going to pick on that? Like, they've been through this process so many times, you would oh think gosh. that they know. But what, like... This the nerve, the nerves, by the way. Yes, hi, <laughs> Bears right, nerd up, right here. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm ter like it's terrifying for me because it's it's really like George kept saying it's my decision. It's not. It Bill he's going to hire who Bill tells him to. But like what what are these other what do we think these other people are even going to offer as part of this in a process? Like that's what I can't wrap my head around. Right, and, and I don't blame you because all their results says you shouldn't wrap your head around the fact that they know what, how to get to the right answer because uh, they haven't, they haven't got to the right answer since they've been in charge since 
George has been chairman since Ted has been, uh, George and Ted have been a team. They have not got to the right answer. So you are right to question them. You just hope that they have finally figured it out. It didn't sound like it on Monday, uh, but you're hoping that Bill Poling can help them uh, get to the right answers, be, be a straight shooter, tell them exactly uh, what they need to hear. And then you hope that even though someone tells you what you need to hear, even though you hear the truth, uh, you hope they're listening. You hope they're willing to change a little bit, uh, change their building a little bit, change the way they do things because the way you have been doing things is working. But I'll tell you this, uh, you don't know. You can't guarantee right now. And George told you that. He said, we know we can't give you any answers here that you will believe us. We just have to show you. Because I think, I, sorry, my, my fear is always like the Ballard. And maybe, you know, whatever, if people want to argue if Ballard was the right guy, everything has come out like, these are the changes I want to make that have to be made. And from most multiple reports, right, like I want to make these changes instantly disqualified him from the conversation. So you pointed out like our to scouting. Get rid of to get Jay Cutler. Yes. He wanted to get rid of Ted Phillips and put him on the other side of the room. And this has been told to me. It was told also to your colleague on NBC mm -hmm. cap. And just to just, piggybacking off of cars to the point if someone and they doubled down on Justin Fields if someone says listen Fields ain't the one well he's here you're not the one is that gonna happen T is and Olin you can answer from that no, I mean I don't, I don't think you want to give the coach you know like you have to ha you ha you know whatever if you pick this guy as your leader you can't tell him what anything's going to be in his building. Yeah, exactly. That's his building, you know, and it's kind of backwards right now, right? And you have to, like I said, we're all trusting uh, Bill Polian, but you're going to hire the coach before the general manager. That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, the general manager is just going to want to get his own guy in there eventually. So it's just kind of exactly. be a, it's going to be a, you know, a struggle there. So I, I don't understand that either. Um, like I said, all the things you're saying is the same thing we've been saying for a while about the, George and Ted tandem, that team, uh, doesn't seem like they know how to get to the answers that they need to get themselves a consistent winning football team here in Chicago. But look, if Bill Polian hits on the coach and Justin Fields is the quarterback, you can win a lot of football games, right? So uh, there is a lot of hope. There is still hope there. Uh, this still is the Chicago Bears. Um, everybody you talk to is like, man, I'd love to play football or coach in the city of Chicago because it's oh an amazing God. place to be. So we're just, you know, if they can get the right coach, he can develop Justin Fields, get that old line fixed, uh, get Khalil Mack back to playing healthy football, Eddie Goldman, like we talked about, developing football players, work your way through it, figure it out. Someone who has that kind of energy to keep everybody moving in the right direction because that's what that building needs. I, I told somebody today, one of Lovey's strengths was when, when he was in the building, for a building that has a lot of chaos and a lot of people moving in different directions, Lovey's very consistent, almost to the point of where you think, man, this guy's crazy, right? Like <laughs> things aren't working. And he comes in the meeting room and says the exact same thing every day. Guys, if we just run the ball and get takeaways, <laughs> we'll be fine. And he just keeps saying it. Hey, and eventually, guy. you know, the ball hey, pops guy. out. And you're like, man, this guy, like maybe he's right, right? But what I'm saying is he brought a lot of consistency to that building. He was kind of perfect for Hallis Hall. He was perfect for what was going on in the building. He never changed. He always preached the same things from the day he walked in 2004. So I wasn't there his last year, but the day that, I'm sure the day they fired him. Uh, uh, one crazy stat, because uh, the example I have for you guys is this. Remember the turnover bucket this year? Oh, yeah. August and oh. July. Well, they ended up with 16, <laughs> right? Yeah. And they had 38 in 2018. But look, you didn't hear about it throughout the year. Yeah. Or you didn't hear about it again. One thing about Lovey, I don't care if they ended up with 11 takeaways. You would constantly hear, yep. we got to get takeaways. We got to get, what I'm saying is, what is your philosophy? What do you believe in? What do you say every single exactly. day? That's what your team becomes. What is your team's ethos? What is your building's ethos? What do you believe in? What do you want to get done here? And I think in 2012, when Lovey got fired, Here's one of the most amazing stats I, I've read. Uh, and, and not to go on this lovely tangent, but I got to say it every time we talk about takeaways. They had 44 takeaways. Yeah. Here. yeah. That is in – they were plus 20. That is insane, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so crazy. 
I didn't even know that. That's yeah, crazy well, when you think so about it. Yeah, you know, I was going through the uh, one day. I was going through the turnover ratio because of the the thirty eight in two thousand eighteen. Yeah. And, and here and, and there's a problem right in that building. Is okay. We had the healthiest team in the league in two thousand eighteen. We had thirty eight takeaways. Right. No one sat down and said how much of what we just watched was real. Right. Yeah. How much of what we just watched can we? I repeat? said it. Yeah. Can we repeat <laughs> next year? Right. And if it and if we don't have that health. And we don't get those takeaways, then how do we win football games? It ain't gonna come from the offense with the clown calling it when he doesn't even counter anything. Oh, me and you have joked privately about the stupidity of Coach Nagy's offense because we you couldn't even figure like, it out. You the didn't philosophy. like the David Montgomery jump pass. <laughs> Oh my God! Let me ask you this: I did like the shovel at the end of the game. Oh, we gotta get (laughs) had to get it in. Gotta get that (laughs) shovel pass in. I I, I gotta give him credit for being that crazy, putting that (laughs) shovel in there. I love it. Let me ask you this, Jim Harbaugh: Mm -hmm. Would you say Phil was the owner? I see talent, and I say, Olin, you're my magician. You're the magic. Agree, the football czar. Is Jim Harbaugh the guy to come in here and do and push away ownership and be the coach in your eyes? Is that somebody that sure sure seems like he could do the job, right? Sure seems like he has the track record, that he has a personality that would fit here in Chicago. I, I'm a strong believer that every every city is a different kind of coach they need, man. Thank I'm a strong you, believer Paul. in that. I'm a strong agree. believer in culture. And you got and, and and what kind of person you have to be in a different city? A uh, guy like Nick Saban interests me too, right? He does. He just he develops oh coaches God. there in college at Alabama. Uh, I know he's an older guy, but he seems to have a ton of energy. Um, you, you know, I think he's just a guy who, like we're talking about, Harbaugh, Saban, uh, just guys who can walk in that building, and you know, even the cafeteria has to be on their toes when he walks in, right? <laughs> even the cook is like, man. If I don't do my job right, this guy is going to demand out of me that we get this right. Right, we're going to walk on an airplane. The airplane is going to be. That's what I think you way. are. That's why I was like, you know, guy. I just, I just think that guys like that. I mean, obviously, like I said, you have to get in a room with them. I, I know all the names. The ball, uh, he does a great job in Buffalo, right? Eberflus does a great job with the Colts. Uh, you know, Bowles does a great job with the Bucks. Leftwich. All the names that, that they're interviewing Flores, guys are successful. Flores, guys. Flores, Brian Did, Flores, uh, a tough defensive football. His, his scheme, when you watch it on film, you can't help but enjoy it, right? I mean, yeah. that 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 you can uh, just blitz tell zero, how well coached they are. Yeah, that Miami. blitz zero with that cover four yeah. matchup behind it. I got oh, no idea what the hell that is. Like, I don't even know. Give him Cole Mack what and he, Robert I, I like Quinn rushing. Talking about hey, coach, what are you doing? What is this coverage you're running here with Blitz Zero? And I have no, and he's dropping out like this nose guard, and they're passing off crossers, and it's fun to watch. It really is fun to watch uh, them play football. The Miami Dolphins. Uh, I've heard, you know, obviously everybody, obviously people have write, written now. All of a sudden, a guy gets fired, and you see all these hit pieces come out about how he's overbearing, and that happens. That's what there. we want. Right. Yeah. I, I I read the piece, Olin. I said it to Shane, and they, it was kind of on the negative that. He rubbed people the wrong way. I go, <laughs> I read this article and I love the guy even well, more. Chicago. That's yeah. exactly the, you hit it out of the park. I've said it before. There needs, there's a certain personality that the Chicago Bears need right now. Mm-hmm. And I, I completely, and I know it sounds stupid for people and what have you, but you saying it just doubles down in truth. I'm sorry. And, and, the, and the thing about like Harbaugh, if, if you're interviewing a college coach, uh, you have to make sure you're talking to them about, look, like what just happened at Urban Meyer. Yeah. Like, you don't oh, yeah. like the players don't come in here like like high school kids and they automatically respect you and they're automatically mm-hmm. stuck here for five years. They will buck you in the NFL. You have to tell me that you are going to earn their respect first before you start leading them in a hard way, before you start yelling at them that I'm going to show them that I can make them better football players. If they buy into this, it equals success for all of us. Like those are the things that you want to hear from a college coach, not I'm going to get them, you know, they're either going to lose my way or the highway. It's either yeah. you're out, you know, no, it, it has to be, okay, look, I, I'm going to coach them hard, but I'm also going to show them that this is good for you, that this is good for your career, that this is the way you're going to make 
money, get to your second contract. This is how we're going to get our Super Bowl ring. This works. I'm going to prove it to you. And once you start getting success and stuff, and then I'm going to start pushing you guys just a little bit harder. But if you follow follow me here, uh, we'll get to where we need to go. Olin, real quick, I know you've been super gracious with your time and you've probably getting a little bit sick of repeating everything all day long. But your your sweatshirt there, I obviously know, is in honor of Jeff Dickerson, but mm-hmm. it just the initials sent off some flares in my head too. James Daniels, moving forward, free agent. Olin Krutz, the executive. Mm-hmm. Are you investing the money in to get him right or are you – investing that money in somebody else to bring in and replace him. I'm a big fan of James Daniels. As you guys know, I've watched him play uh, three different positions. I, I, I keep him in the fold. Yeah. I make him an offer. Now, it just depends on, you know, does Teron Armstead become a free agent? Uh, can I go after a left tackle? Can I fix my left tackle spot? Uh, bump Tevin Jenkins over to right tackle. Maybe move Borm to right guard. I don't know what I'm going to do on my offensive line, but I'm going to play my best five. I know that. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to overload that place with talent. Because, because it's been the cupboard's been dry for too long. I need to get answers in there. I need to fix the offensive line. That is my number one goal. As you, I know that's shocking for everybody, but it is. I'm a big fan of James now. I think he can play all three positions inside. I didn't like the way he played at the end of this year. So I would have to find out what the problem was there. I didn't like his pass blocking. I thought he got beat by guys he shouldn't get beat by. I think James Downs is a tremendously talented athlete on oh, yeah. the inside. I think he moves guys off the ball. He's got long arms. He's got that big, you know, he's got that big rump. posterior, what you need, right? Yeah. He's got that the big posterior, rumps. which can't be moved. So uh, I don't think James Daniel at his age, I think he's still young, 23, yeah. 24. 24. 24 yeah, in September. I don't, yeah. I don't think you want to let – these guys are Agreed. rare now. They're rare to find offensive linemen like him. So I'm going to make him a pretty good offer uh, to stay in my building. Obviously, I have to know a lot of things, though. Right? I got to know uh, what is his work ethic like. I got to talk to people. Uh, does he like he the had game a weird exchange? Did you yeah. hear the exchange with, with Potash? Potash? Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't uh-huh. hear. It. I'll send it to so you. So uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, it was, Potash it was, essentially just asked him, was asking him to compare Ferentz at Iowa to the well, situation. Well, first he took shots at Nagy. Yeah. Okay. Then, then About he not t- helping out. He's like, no, sometimes he's like, we'd get out there and our our guys would just be all alone. You know, there's, he's like, there's I no see, chip and there's no nothing. Yeah, I see it. Uh, a future Hall of Fame left tackle for the he's talking about the 49ers getting chips and help, but our offense, we're not getting any chips. <laughs> we're not getting any help on our so he's calling Nagy out. <laughs> then he then he doubles down. I forget the next one he called out, like Juan, I believe. And then this back and forth because well, I think right there is where he started to pump the brakes, like holy shit. What I, am I, I want an I want an extension from this team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these guys haven't, you know, these guys haven't been fired yet. You know, so I think that that's but Olin, you brought up Teron Armstead. Are you concerned? Like his snaps have been wildly yep. inconsistent they because have. of injuries. Yep. Now, are you but, that that's gotta be a huge concern? Oh, it's a huge red flag, right? But but if he's available and the way he plays football, yeah, and I I would as an executive, I would believe in my strength staff. I would believe in the fact that I could make a plan for him, that I could get him healthy. Uh, obviously, you have to do your homework. You got to sure. do your research. Um, you know, he's just a name that pops in my head. Uh, as a, I think Cam Robinson might be a left tackle too out there. Uh, there's other some other different options. Obviously, I don't have a first round pick, right? So I got to figure something out for my offensive line because I don't get a pick uh, in the first round to try to fix the tackle mm-hmm. position. For what I understand about this draft. Uh, there's not a lot of high-level left tackles that are going to fall into the second round. So I do have Tevin Jenkins, but I got nothing guaranteed there, right? I do have Borum, but I have nothing guaranteed there. So I have tackles that no one has ever played 16 games yet. I don't know what they're going to look like once the wear and tear comes on. I just can't leave that cupboard dry again and again and again and I, a year I, after I, year I now, after year and I, say, I, like, I'm going to fix this, right? I understand. That's all we keep hearing. The whole line I, is the problem. Well, somebody fix it. Somebody I, fix now it, I please. understand more because someone played us a drop of you and it sounded as if you're just p- bypassing Jenkins can't be a left tackle. He's only had oh, a few no, games. No, not at all. Now not I all. know what you're no. saying. You're saying almost like we're saying, like Bears fans, Darnell Mooney's great, but you can't, you can't just say Darnell's number one receiver. We got a receiver. Now we got to get a couple – 
you gotta I'm keep get another number one, right? Yeah, yeah you gotta like, get like, yeah. listen. I'm gonna get myself seven or eight saying. offensive linemen, and it made a best man win. Made exactly. a best man Would win. Would you bring Peters job. back for another year? I hope I don't have to. Yeah. And I hope I don't have to do that again. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I think we all say this. Yeah. We all love Jason Peters, right? And right. I don't have to bring him back. He just showed me that if I need somebody, I can I can go get him. But he can show up week seventeen. You, did he surprise you this year, though, at his age. I mean, he he surprised me. He did. He did surprise me. And, and not only that, but but I loved his leadership out yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, I thought he was leading the guys. I thought he was helping with technique. Uh, I thought he was giving them everything they had, even. When he thought he shouldn't be playing, uh, I thought he shouldn't be playing. I thought Tevin Jenkins should have been out there yeah. uh, playing football, especially against the Minnesota Vikings backup defensive ends. But that's a whole nother and argument. The Giants. That th- and those the Giants. Those guys are gone. You know, those guys are gone now. But uh, I hope I don't have to. I, I hope that I can bring in other guys uh, uh, that are in the at least a Pro Bowl or All Pro type level. Because if you want your offensive line to be good, you need a few studs out there, man. You need guys who dominate football games, who get after people, uh, who can dominate matchups week in and week out. So uh, that's what I got to try to go get on my offensive line. So if you brought in Teron Armstead in free agency and the draft didn't fall your way, who would be Olin Krutz's best five? Well, who, uh, camp well, who's opens there? Teron Armstead is the guy that is, the, is your guy that well, you brought in in free agency. His but Daniels. Yeah, what he's resigned, asking is Daniels yeah, there. Yeah, and, and you resigned James Daniels. So what would I? I guess I'm asking position wise. What would be Olin's best five? Well, I'm I'm, I'm well, in the mix. Then is obviously Armstead, Cody Whitehair, uh, James Daniels, Sam Mustafer, Larry Borum, and Tevin Jenkins. Yep. Right, and that's yep. I, I I like that. I, I like that mix of guys there. Right, and here's the thing about James Daniels. Um, I got to see him and Borum at right guard. I got to see if Borum and Tevin Jenkins. Because if I give if I got Teron Armstead, I got to give him all that money. He's my starting left tackle, so that's done. Yeah, right? right. And then there's Cody Whitehair, there's Sam Mustafa, there's James Daniels, uh, there's Larry Borum, and there's Tevin Jenkins. And uh, to answer that question without knowing all of what, like they moved James Daniels out of that center spot because they said he couldn't make the calls, right? And they moved Cody Whitehair to left guard because they said that Cody has trouble making the calls. They moved Sam in there. Uh, is James better than Sam at center? Is Sam better than James? Is James better than Cody at left guard? Is Borum better than James at right guard? Those questions I couldn't answer for you. But you those would are the figure that, that out will get answered. on the field. Yeah, yeah. yeah those right? are the questions that when I put them all in pass. Exactly. Uh, look, they they have to figure that out themselves. And if the he, best man's gonna win the job. If right? Daniels and if can't if make, you, if Daniels right. can't make the call, Olin, is that more of an indictment on the offensive line coach and the coaching staff, or is it on, more on the player? Well, remember now, that was when Mitch Trubisky was the quarterback, yep. right? So I don't know about that dynamic. I don't know about if Mitch could direct things. I didn't know. Uh, I don't know what Justin Fields is like in the huddle at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. So that's a totally different uh, aspect of it. But uh, the center in some offenses, if you don't have a Drew Brees or Tom Brady, you have to be the general out there. You have to make a lot of calls. You have to be loud. You have to be studying your book. You have to know the fronts. You have to know the blitzes. You have to know what's coming at you. If you don't, uh, it's a hard day for everybody in the offensive line because now oh, yeah. everybody's moving in the wrong direction. So um, it's just such a hard question to answer. But I think the Bears' answer is get as many guys in that building who can play football. Exactly. And then let's see who wins. And possibly draft more offensive linemen yeah. up top where <laughs> Ryan Pace, let's just keep that 100, failed. Well, you yeah. got you got to win in the trenches, right? You got to win in the trenches. And Seven Ryan Pace years, told yeah. you that his offensive line was broken, and then went out and signed a defensive end for seventy million, right? Yeah. So <laughs> exactly. we all know. Listen, exactly. that's just and and then they and they'll keep talking about they don't know why their offensive line is broken. And I'm thinking I got a few guesses, right? I got a few guesses on <laughs> on, on what's going on in the offensive line. But but I will say this, man, that 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 Tevin Jenkins when he was in there. Uh, his first game was a little rough, his hands, but he's got he's got them better. He's a big man. I like what I saw from Larry Borum when he was out there. I get worried about the fact like, that Tevin Jenkins goes out with an injury. Borum misses some time. I worry about yeah. you, you got to show that you can play 16 games. But to be honest, man, look, um, I think it was my second year starting. I had two MCLs. I was out for eight or nine games. Uh, I tell everybody the story that I remember Tom Thayer saying that the Bears need to re-sign Casey Wigman 
because you don't know if Olin Cruz can stay healthy. Mm -hmm. And that's a fair assessment. It really was at the time. It was a fair assessment. And, and he's right until I prove him wrong. So I hope these guys can come you out remember there and prove hearing us wrong. That? Yeah. You remember and it motivated you? Oh, it's for sure. You, you want to prove to people that you can what? stay healthy, that you can that's play. It's not I'm a motivation saying. like, I hate Tom Fair. I'm mad at him. No, it's exactly. more of a motivation. Like, I'll show you. Like, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to train hard. I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to play football. And then I think I went on a nine-year run that I didn't miss And you had a C. Yeah, you had a yeah. C on your shirt. Was that every other week? Was that the odd weeks? Or did they kind of let that – sorry, I, I couldn't – Oh, and we have to yeah, ask I had a, you it had, I had a C, but underneath it it said, only with a grain of salt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the no-name podcast, <laughs> podcast has to get the no, the. No, I, 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 I'm going to tell right? J-Mac I want to change our podcast to grain of salt. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. A grain dude. of salt. Or the podcast. $15 an hour podcast. <laughs> Either way, it works out completely. Olin, we owe you fifteen fifty. Fifteen fifty at least. Coming on the show. I think, at least I tell everybody this that trains at my gym. I said, uh, uh, uh. An egg McMuffin and an orange juice is what you owe me if you ever make it. So I, you guys can give me an egg McMuffin and orange juice one day. I'll take real, it from McDonald's. Oh, before we let you go, real quick, guy. after everything unfolded and George said that, did, was your phone just nonstop going off from it was, former it, it teammates? Was, it, was, and, it was going off from former teammates and, yeah. and things like that. But but look, I mean, uh, I, I'll tell you guys my exact response to all of them. I, I was not – I told my – I'm not – that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. It really doesn't surprise me that, that that it was handled that way. And I just, like, I don't have this feeling of hate them or hate George yeah. or hate Ted. Or, I really don't because I'm not shocked that, that he said that about me. I really ain't. Uh, but I do have a feeling of I'm not going to let him just say that and, and not defend the fact that, look, yeah. um, I've known for a lot of things that I don't argue about. I, I have a lot of shortcomings. But uh, bullshitting is not one of them, right? The exactly. Bullshitting people – is not one of them. Uh, I take a lot of pride in the things I say. Um, I take pride in them being true. And, and I study film when I analyze work, uh, when I tell stories, uh, they did happen most of the time. And, and they're my side of story, but they're not completely fabricated. Right. Yeah. And, and the fact that he didn't just say that that story was wrong. He said that, you know, everything, everything this guy says, everything, everything. That, so uh, that, 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 was that was like, you know, and I wouldn't even say like, you know, for someone to make you mad, you got to actually care about what they think about you. I can't say I really care uh, what George thinks about me. So, but I am going to defend the fact that you said about me. Well, now right. I do have to say something about you. Okay. It's fair. I couldn't say it any better. He's always gracious with his time and he comes on our show. I got emotional because it really did bother me probably more than him when George did that, because I knew Olin's not a guy that's going to fabricate and manipulate well, I think Olin said story. it perfect today, Phil. Like, Olin, I, I really respected what you said today. It's When I think of the Chicago Bears, I don't think of the McCaskies. I don't think of Ted I Phillips. I think and, of the and to fans. be honest, I, I, told yeah. a few of my team, I told a few of my former teammates that who called yeah. me, and they were like, you know, screw the Bears. And I said, don't say that, man. Yeah. It's not true. It's not true. They, they're like uh, – uh, we love the Bears. We love the Bears to win. Yeah. Uh, like I said, love playing football for the Bears. Every every player should want to play football in this city, right? Every football player should want to be here playing I football. Every guy. coach should want to coach in in Chicago, play for the Chicago Bears. Uh, obviously, uh, you, the, the ownership you, you got to overcome it, man. It's just it's just a part of it. It's a part of playing for the Bears. But that's why so many people hang around in this city. Former players, me. Being from Honolulu, Hawaii, here I am in Illinois. My two boys play football at the. They're going to be playing football at the University of oh, Illinois soon. Congratulations uh, yeah, on that! You know, we, yeah. we 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 love the city, love the state, and love the Chicago Bears. So I, I won't, I won't let them make. They won't affect my yeah. feeling towards the team I played 13 years for. That's right. Well, I sent you some swag, but now I got to send you another one, and on the back. It's going to be a special statement yeah. with a, a salt grain shaker. big old salt, salt shaker with number 57 on it, right? <laughs> there, that's exactly there it is. what's coming yeah. your way. There and the next is. time you come on this show, you better be rocking that. <laughs> For sure. Listen, I love you, man. Thank you so Thank much, you. man. You're the class of what you should be in that organization, in my opinion. But to come on here and express your truth 
and keep it a hundred as well as still be loyal to this city and this football team and hope for the best. That just says everything about your character and everything about what we fans saw the McCaskies and Ted Phillips do. So thank you for coming on tonight. True class act. Can't wait to debate with you again with some tape next time. Yeah, I love the tape, man. You know me. I'll pour I know. Over it. I pour we're over gonna, tape. we're gonna, we're gonna get uh, my I, father's I, I, like I, talk to him and get him on because <laughs> I want to talk to him about this center. Oh, I, I would love mean. it, and, and I, t- I tell you, Dad, I said this now. I'm, I'm gonna pull tape of Sam making calls, picking up blitzes, changing, changing protection I schemes. I swear, I'm so proud the of way, Sam so. against the the Vikings. And yes. the giant, I thought he played his best ball, right. and that says a lot about him. So, but it's, and there's no doubt also that there's a lot he has to improve on, as most guys who start their first 17 games in a row, right? And he knows it, and yeah. we'll talk about it. And like you guys know, uh, out of respect for him, I don't say his shortcomings a lot, but he doesn't get bullshitted in my gym. Now he gets the real deal. Uh, he gets what he what he needs to work on. He'll he'll tell you that uh, there's not a lot of bullshitting goes on in my gym. Uh, we shoot it straight there. Out of respect for him, I don't say a lot about it, but he knows. He knows. And, and all we know fire, we, we no both salt. Know. Right. Yes, we, we all have to improve, man. <laughs> Go, give me one of these real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's awesome. <laughs> Listen, he is former Chicago Bear center, the captain, future Hall of Famer, Olin Krutz. Thank you so much for your time and for keeping it 100 tonight on the Tape Never Lies Network. I love you, man. I, I Appreciate truly... it, guys, man. Always a great show. Love it. Thanks, Thanks Olin. Right, Olin Krutz. Look at this guy. So if you great. don't like that guy, I don't know. I mean, that was probably one of the best interviews in a long, long time, getting that truth, the salts in the wounds. The salts in the wounds. That's all you want. And that's all, Phil, when we – started this whole fucking thing and i know i I know we have our detractors and people that are jealous of what we do or just plain old don't like us and right olin kruitz is the reason people like that are the reason that we put the time and effort into this network right there right there he's no nonsense no bullshit and he may say stuff that pisses you off and that's how you improve that's exactly Sometimes you say you. things that you shouldn't say. Maybe you're not saying it at the right time. It doesn't matter. It's at the end of the day, like he just told you, he had players, teammates say, "Fuck the Bears." Don't don't say that. What did yeah. he do? Exactly. exactly. This is he ain't lying. He ain't lying. He sent me a private text, and it's exactly like that. The guy is as true. Listen, I'll go to fu- I'll go to fucking war for Olin, and I know I'm right. If imagine Olin in that, do you come away now even more thinking Phil's right, Shane? Like oh, Olin as the football it. czar goes in there and said, "Come on, buddy, let's go watch Justin on this tape." It, not even he's gonna. That. It's he's not, gonna go the extra to mile. To me, it's not even about the fucking title, Phil. It's yeah. even even just having him in the building because. You listen, if he drove up to ha- that's why I brought that up to him. And I do think it's important and I'm not going to step on Olin's toes and, and, and stuff like that. But I do, I am that guy. I, and I've had, you've shitty, done it to me. I've had shitty things happen in my life. I've had, yeah, I've been through shit with you. I've, you've I've made call, phone calls with you that you I didn't want to me onto make. the carpet. And exactly. If a real friend, a yep. real friend to the end, we're lucky if we got one. I'm probably the luckiest man in the world because, as my wife points it out, I got her, I got Shane, and she can go down the list of real true Jim Larison, real true friends that give a shit. Yeah, fuck that's you, what Claude. Olin is. <laughs> he calls out. Shane will tell me something maybe I don't want to hear, but at the end of the day. That is the difference between being a friend. And that's what the yeah, problem it, is with the Bears. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, that, that is precisely what I'm fucking talking about, Phil. It, it, if you're not going to assume your mistakes, I mean, every one of us has our fucking flaws. Everybody does. And Absolutely. that's, I mean, 
that's why I've said that's why I have Ela in my life because she's no fucking nonsense and she will tell you right to your fucking face sometimes like I've I've had that George McCaskey look on my face like holy fuck but then you think about it and you're like yeah she's a hundred percent right I just didn't want to hear it that <laughs> at that moment but I mean with Olin he talked about Nick Saban and and guys like that coming in and commanding a fucking presence if Olin pulled up to Hallis Hall tomorrow and I honestly feel this way and he knocked on the door tried to swipe the card get in whatever and went in there and said hey enough is enough maybe I should have handled things differently I think you should have handled things differently I think open dialogue Phil in the long run in this situation and Olin wasn't a hundred percent against it, and he kind of agreed with me a little bit. And he said, "Maybe that is." I honestly feel like that could be the the kicking off point that could make big changes in Hallis Hall. I slightly disagree, but only in the sense of George is not answering that. George, I don't think is at all well, has he be ever willing. been called out on it cars like i'm here because my mommy says i'm doing a good job that's been his entire fucking existence his entire life has he ever been held accountable to his fucking face that's what Would he saying. allow himself to be though probably that's, that's, not probably not because that's right the there. biggest the, that's the biggest takeaway from all of this is they literally said like are you going to make this change i don't think if footballs are works for us was the phrase right like it's i don't think changes to the it's organization <laughs> works for us and i said have this, you tried it I, that's no what i would ask that's what and, i would ask. well and the question really has to be listen there's 52 super bowls 52 you've won one, one. You've, you've been, been to two, two. two. <laughs> that that's doesn't it. work that's you're, it you're you're a hundred percent right, but I think in what Shane is just to saying, be the better person, even if you get rebuffed, well, you know what I mean. It's Olin a, is already the better person. You gotta shoot your fucking shot. If the hot chick is up at the fucking bar and you've been looking at her for two years, unless you fucking walk up to it or to her and shoot your shot, you're never gonna know, and you're gonna live with that fucking regret. And like Phil said, Olin can be the better guy and do it. If you get rebuffed, you get rebuffed. But I, I just. I think he, I think you're right, but my my, my point yeah. is he would get rebuffed. I don't I don't get the sense that George is in the building every day. I don't get the oh, sense he's that he's used yeah. to these things. Well, you could call and schedule ahead with him. Find out a day that you know, like, hey, every Wednesday he's here, and you can show up. And George strikes me as the type of guy that's sneaking out the back door sure. because he doesn't want the confrontation. I yeah. think George knows what he said was wrong, but. Just like Michael, like I, some of you guys might be too young to remember Michael McCaskey led press conferences. <laughs> but that guy, like yeah. you could have a picture yeah. of him in the act of doing something, and Michael McCaskey yeah. would be like, "No, nah, man, I don't, I don't know what you see. That wasn't me. That's incorrect." Like th none of these people have ever taken accountability. The for, Lucky for Sperm like Club <laughs> exists in. Chicago with the McCassie. Let's just call it what it is. To be a man is to hear your wrongs from somebody that cares about you. If Olin didn't care, he wouldn't have come on this show right. and been as, as outstanding as he was. If he wouldn't Olin have verified care, his sources and the would, story exactly. before if, he came out with it. Those at least fucking would, blog boys taking shots at Olin. Yeah. All of you TTNL people need mm. to stand behind Olin. Like, fuck these. They're a huge part of the McCaskey bullshit. They are. It's misinformation after misinformation. Here's the story. Olin Krutz is the only one on your television sets. Because not everybody's watching TTNL. Because I would say we do it. At this level. But he's the only one calling out the scheme, the leadership, the direction, the where they're going, the messages that are being sent. Ryan Pace, McCaskies. He's the only one doing it. 
that's on television. And David Kaplan, our other our other buddy, but he has that tie into them. David's just a media guy. So when the McCaskies are threatened by one of their own, it becomes a scary moment where we're going to throw salt on him. If Jarrett, there's Jarrett Payton, who the McCaskies adore and love, does he go out there and say, this is what's fucking wrong with the Bears? It's the mismatch. No, he doesn't do that. So Olin does what we do here by calling the truth out. And when you have a conflict of messages, which we saw, do I got to play Ted Phillips again? If you go into an organization and you set, you hired somebody and they failed in the most important thing in football, it ain't getting the draft right. It ain't fucking getting the right coach. It's wins. That's it. Did you hear anything about Let's win. That's all we want here. We're going to do everything, everything but win, right, they, Phil? Exactly. <laughs> so that's my point, is that in this press conference, we didn't hear one thing about winning. It's the, it's the reality of my fear. Because I do, I, I have to take credit. Because nobody else except Shane and TTNL people and fans will point it out. They'll... They're writing their stories, stealing shit from us. But to me, this is the problem 99%, right? The hiring of Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, I don't regret that. Lies, lies, and more lies, and lies on top of lies. As an organization, we had conviction on this quarterback and his special attributes. Um, they both brought a lot to the Bears. Now, ultimately on the field, the results weren't where we wanted it to, but um, never take cough syrup and mix it up with iodine and lie. I think they've checked a lot of the boxes. Fail, suck, useless, blech, and just put um, you can't ask for better leaders. You can't ask for better forward thinkers. Fantastic. Brilliant. You can't ask for people that um, gave their all, had great work ethic, were humble. And we're going to look for a lot of those same qualities. And hopefully with uh, Bill's uh, vast expertise. Concept-wise, his run game doesn't match with his pass game. Uh, in the technicalities of of uh, coaching strategy and uh, valuation processes, that that's going to uh, add a nice added benefit to our search and going to help us find the right uh, Yeah. That's a problem, Cars. Sorry, the biggest problem with that is, and I'm sure you guys got the sense, they did not want to fire these two. No, they didn't. Right. Regardless of the record right. today. That's what I'm saying. They had no interest in doing this. This is why they took a shot at the fans. This is oh why God. they shit on the fans. They shit on Olin. They shit on the, the people in that press room by buttering them up with Jeff Dickerson and used his kid oh. as a prop. Oh, my God. It was a disgrace beyond anything, Cars. To do that. It was – we are only in here because – it just became too much. Like they were going to be a laughing stock had they not. I am utterly convinced that they were ready to let Matt Nagy go. But if Bill Polian was not in that room, Ryan Pace would still be here. I agree. And I agree. again, if we go back to that point, why was Ryan Pace chosen? Why was he chosen over Ballard and the other people? Because he was willing to take the status quo and yes, work man. within all of that because they don't think that the way that they're structured is wrong. The record is bad. We don't win, but I'm unwilling to change everything else. If you're willing to work under these constraints, we will hire you. And if you become an, if you're a super nice guy and you bring in 
you know, uh, I'll use Olin's. You bring at me an egg McMuffin and an orange juice every day. <laughs> You've got a job here for as long as you want. Fuck the record. Fuck championships. If you are a nice dude, stay. That's I'm what- just a fan. I'm not a football evaluator. And it's a, and that's the other part. I'm just a fan, but the decision is yours. I am not a football evaluator, but the choice is mine. Ted Phillips can't deal with more than just working on a stadium. So that's the only reason Ted Phillips isn't going to be in the reporting chain. Because a stadium that they don't own land for yet, that hasn't even begun to be dug or built or designed, that's going to take his time. Like and and do you trust him? I mean, he was implicitly in the last one, right? Implicitly, I trust. It's gonna be thirty thousand seats somehow and no parking. Uh, oh god, no! It, they won't mess that up. They can't. It's it's <laughs> mind blowing when you look at everything that happened in that press conference, and the and that he keeps saying we haven't won enough, we haven't won enough, we haven't won enough. Hey, why is Ted Phillips in the room? I trust Ted's decision making and his counsel. Implicitly was the term. Implicitly. Implicitly. You have the worst stadium deal. You've had horrible coaches. And he has a voice because you trust him. And and let's be real, the reason he trusts him is because probably Ted goes, I don't know. What do you think? I like that idea too. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And these are the people running our beloved you organization. You trusted your ex-wife at one point, right? You know what I mean? That's what, not just you specifically, but everybody. I, I just, oh, God. listen, we're going to get right back into it. But let me tell you, keeping it 100 on the Tape Never Lies Network is brought to you by BetUS. Bet Brian US. Flores com. is plus 150 to be the Chicago Bears next head coach. One plus 150, Ryan Flores. Life is back on sports betters, you TTNL heads. And BetUS has you, your NBA, NHL. NFL playoffs, UFC, PGA, yes, all of it. Lines are up for their 27th year and live betting on all of those sports, everything. Log in to BetUS.com or call the number 1-800-792-3887. That's 1-800-79-BET-US. BetUS for 125% bonus with the promo code SHYCITY125. Customer service pros are ready to get your phone, social, and online sports betting kickoff started now. Play with the proven mainstay in the industry, BetUS. You bet, you win, you get paid. It's BetUS.com. There you go. BetUS, SHYCITY125. Speaking of 150, plus 150 Flores. Shane, that story was sent out. We touched upon it with um, Olin here. I came away from that story wanting Flores even more. And that was it a, is a weird thing. Go ahead, Cars. I'm that, sorry. Was a DB, that was a the Bears blog slander, right? Like Exactly. That is Will, Will, uh, GM Greer's best friend covering for him. I'm kind of convinced oh that God. Hughes is close to Ted or someone near him. Oh, he's George. because one. It's we got George. the. We figured it out, Shane and I. Yeah, and it's and so he, you know, like that. One of you're absolutely happens. right. He looked at it and went, "This organization sucks. I got to do this all myself." Absolutely, like I was not really all that in on Flores. Now I am absolutely. I, I came away like this is the guy that the Chicago Bears need someone with a backbone. Well, it's going to say, this is how we're doing it. This is not what we're doing. We all know that Matt Nagy was a shoe salesman. He wasn't prepared to be an NFL head coach on every level, on every level. And I'm Ryan Pace was not prepared to be a GM. And, he, and exactly. Phil Emery was not prepared to be a GM. Exactly. And even um, Angelo really wasn't ready to be a general manager. He really wasn't like he's yeah. These bean counting. What? Collaborating bullshitters are running the bears. And all we have in hope 
is Bill Poley. And now I don't know Tanisha. I don't know her. She could be smart as a whip. She could be everything. But she was an event planner four months ago. Soup Campbell was promoted four months ago. Both of them. So th it seems like they've been planning this thing. Right? Uh, I mean, the we all know the elephant in the room of really why they're involved. Hey, we're diverse oh. and we're looking at it, right? Like, which is I've, fine. Like, they should definitely be part of. But as a football organization, why isn't Olin an Olin Krutz or someone like him part of this interview process exactly. that knows when exactly. success was, that they knows what good looks like? Jerry Azuma. Offered Lance Pat Briggs, Manley. Briggs, Pat Manley, Manley did too. like there's Pat Manley. Pat Manley. There's all these resources. I, I think I, I went on multiple rants lately, so you have to forgive me. But like Broke. the Bears have won more than ten games in back-to-back -back seasons once since Ditka left, and that is the one team, once. the Lovey Smith era team, that it seems that the McCaskies can't stand, that they don't want to listen to, hear from anything if you those are the people that should be there that was a winning culture for all of lovey's problems with offense and, and all of that they were what like 88 and 70 or something ridiculous like that during his time and you're not going to pull any of those people you're going to rely simply on bill polian to ask literally every football question and 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 Ted to be like, so what kind of foods do you like to eat, right? Like, what what is he going to add to this conversation? You need as many football people to come back and be a part of this. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing because do they even know the right questions to ask? So Olin no. started out his, his mini rant with, I would take him into the film room. Yes. And obviously, Justin Field. Like, to ignore the Justin Fields and take the high road when they were pressed and doubled that, I think the next don't guy do hypotheticals. Him. Yeah, we don't. Do, well, that's an if, and an if is a hypothetical. We're getting into Imagine semantics how many because you decided. Questions you have, exactly. you would have to. You have to. A head coach is or this GM guy candidate? going it's to be able to do it? That's a if hypothetical. This, if this happens, what are you going to do? If you know, two minutes left, left in the fourth quarter, <laughs> right. I have to have six different plays because if this one breaks, then it changes. If it doesn't break, then I've got to do something to push the ball bird. Everything. I analytics is such a bigger part of this right now. And it comes really down to coaching too. You have to know like a good receiver and a good offense. You've got a route tree, right? Everything you've got three, two or three different options on a route. That's an if. If a defensive back does this, you have to do this. That is football. That they're is football fucking, operations. The whole fucking operations. Are, oh, a fucking what yeah. if? Here's the hypothetical. What if we win once? What, what if you're, we win? You're what watching, if we get the new stadium? We haven't watching, gotten the Here's your land. hypothetical. You're watching tape late one night, and you walk downstairs, and Ted's banging another secretary. You know, <laughs> how do you handle that? <laughs> are you going to text Adam John so so it you know it becomes public knowledge? You're going to help cover that up. But if Ted Phillips tells you you can't trade up for Ladainian yeah. Tomlinson, and then later on tells you you can't trade up for Deuce McAllister. What are you doing? Can you imagine? Exactly. Had a deal all a set. Story. Nixed it. This guy. I, I don't know if you guys heard. By the way, the Bears. I don't know if you guys heard on Hogan Johns. They even said that when Dave Taub interviewed, yeah. they or Taub, excuse me, Dave Taub interviewed. He said he wanted to get rid of Jay Cutler, and yeah. that as well is why he wasn't considered for the position. Yeah, because so it wasn't just Ballard. It that's was why they said in those questions, because of the Ballard stuff, if a coach or potential GM doesn't like Justin Fields, are they automatically removed because of that history that they have? But that it's it's total listen. Jay Cutler was who Jay Cutler was at that yeah, point. Right. So you're, you're talking. I, I, I mean, agree. Justin Fields has had what seven, eight games at this point. If you Nobody come in and hypothetically, if you come in honestly. If I'm on that, if I'm on that crew, and and you're dismissing this kid from Jump Street, I I have a lot of I have a lot of issues with that.
I, absolutely. I, I do too. I'm just saying, historically, whatever they have, you better like or else we don't like you. It's that I'm going to take my ball and go home, little blog boy. They got a bunch of blog boys running the fucking bears. You're lucky you got built. You know, Polian coming in there to help this situation. Well, but this is but, the problem, though, right there, Phil. And, and Olin brought this up, but it kind of got glossed over during the interview. And it wasn't really anybody's fault because the information was just flying. Bill Polian is the football guy right now. Exactly. Right now is the key part in there. It's not yeah. football guy. It's right now. So what happens in August? When there's a massive the GM problem. is the only football Exa guy. exactly That's it. then you you're gonna go to this mouth breathing idiot that can't even shave his mustache straight for answers <laughs> and he already told you that he felt he uncomfortable say? when Matt Nagy approached him about the quarterback. That's not me. I, I, I felt I'm I the grandson of the guy who fucking invented football in the professional sports world. But I'm just a fan. I'm not a football evaluator. But no that, shit. You're, that eliminates still, do not get it twisted. If the new general manager comes up in draft time and wants to make a move, I, I'm throwing out hypotheticals, right? But like, if. it could be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get some big name guy. I'm going to move Khalil Mack for Michael Thomas and the New Orleans Saints, right? Ted Phillips is still going to sign off and have to sign off on that money. deal. Yep. He even he, said in the presser that he's going to be working on the contracts for the coach and the new GM. See, so he's always involved, but always even. So when right now they are deferring to Bill Polian because they are in the public eye, the second Bill Polian is gone, the structure go, kind of goes back and some of the same issues Go that's back what, to the way it is. Bro, that's why him standing there, him being George, saying we don't need a football czar, is the most arrogant, stupid, egotistical, maniacal, bullshit blog boy thing I've ever witnessed. Yeah, it's Ramsey, the key in the whole thing. Right, Ramsey, the, it's a great question because there is a, a massive difference, but it depends on the organizational structure. So in Chicago, it's a fucking it's the general manager, and then you have a fucking accountant, and then you have a fan as an owner. Yeah. Yep. So it's all about accountability. So if you're Ryan Pace, now let's back it up. It's the 2017 NFL draft. So Ryan Pace is essentially the GM, the GM and the football czar. Yes. yes. So he's all in on Mitch, all in. Won't even talk to his head coach. Right. Doesn't even Didn't inform his, his head, head coach, coach about it. Speak, so preach it. If you have a guy with football acumen up above Ryan Pace, at some point, if you're doing your fucking job, you let Ryan Pace do what he's doing. You don't even have to disrespect him in front of people. But you're going to go down there. You're going to grab yourself a cup of coffee. You're going to walk into Ryan's office. You're going to close the door and you're going to sit down and say, hey, Ryan. You're all in on Trubisky. That's your guy. I understand it, but These I just six. caught wind that you're talking to San Francisco and to Cleveland about potentially moving up. Are you really telling me that you have so much of a widespread difference in grading between Trubisky, Watson, and Mahomes? I mean, just that's the fucking... There's, Take it a step further, though. Yeah. That person is going to be the one that makes sure that Ryan Pace doesn't go run off into a vacuum yeah. and make that Mitch decision. That person is going to sit down and be like, what does our head coach think about that player? And if Ryan Pace then goes, well, John Fox actually really doesn't like Mitch. He wants Deshaun Watson. Right. Okay, let's get back into a room and really look back at to why the football side wants that. Let's have those conversations before we even get to the trade. Like, you want to narrow down on a guy, let's make sure all voices are being heard. Ryan Pace's singular issue seems to be 
I this is the guy I want. I'm going to move up with conviction. And every single person other than Fields that he moved up for with conviction, by and large, was a failure. Model. Red Hat. Ryan Big Pace failure. had true full GM power. Yes, Big he time. Did. This is, you know, some people. Think about were, the expansion he, at Hallis Hall. That was he, him. Listen, and this is this is where the Bears ownership group gets a bad rap because you're saying they're not involved in football. They Ted Phillips had to sign off on the Khalil Mack deal. He's trade the two first rounders. Yeah. And then on top of it, I'm going to give him the biggest contract in the history of the league for a defender. They signed off on all of that. They've spent plenty of fucking money. It just hasn't been spent wisely, but Ryan, Ryan pace had all the fucking juice in the world here oh. in Chicago. Listen, and I want to address some things in the chat because some organizations are structured like this with the GM and an owner and then a head, you know, head of college scouting, head of pro personnel, scouts on down. The issue with the Chicago Bears and why some of these blog boys and, and maybe some of you in the chat are like, well, other teams are structured like this. Cars just told you for 30 something years, the structure of the bears has not worked. They have not worked. So the incompetence of a fan of a fan, a GM reporting to a fan, we might as well get Diddy in there. He, he Report to di <laughs> report to this guy, Joe Schmo, whoever, just a fan. I don't care. How is that going to be able to be successful? It hasn't. So that's why it was important that you get someone that isn't the yes man, that isn't the voice, that was only his focus or her focus, his focus is all about football operations he would be the overseer the leader of watching the gm and helping that gm out in situations that belong in football and would make a priority on winning not come yeah. out here reprimand kids for yelling at a coach praising and and buttering up using jd's the loss of JD and all of the minutia and disgrace that was that presser that was worse cars than collaboration. And you never oh, thought it could be. You it, never thought it could be. Make no mistake that that wasn't just like a little bit worse. That is oh I'm making a round trip to Jupiter level amount worse <laughs> of just how bad that is. No, and, and Phil, you're right. Like, Everybody is structured differently, but let's use kind of the gold standard right now in the way that the Pittsburgh Steelers have been orchestrated. They don't have technically a true uh, president of football operations, but what they have done is they broke up these two roles, basically, and, and Colbert is the GM and uh, Khan is the vice president of football, right? These, well, where Colbert has the end-all choice basically of of who's picked and why he's picked and trades and stuff Khan is the one that's in between that making sure from a fit that the business side of that ties into the financial side of that fit and this contract and it fits we that contract right and he's got football acumen to tie it back now that's that's a team that's drafted extremely well they've done that and the family of the Steelers recognizes, yes, one of their their kids is part of the whole operations group, but he's not in charge. Khan has more say because he go by the time that he and Colbert go up together, they have a united front. They can explain both sides of everything that happens, and that's why it works. That is a structure. I don't necessarily, to a degree, they're right, right? We don't need a, a football czar. But you have to change the structure. Someone mentioned Cincinnati, right, like as a joke. But when Marvin Lewis came in, yeah. they gave Marvin Lewis the option. And he took the smallest scouting department by far in the league, tripled it in size, 
took in more voices, did all of this. It's embarrassing to say that Cincinnati had won 10 games in a, in a season four years in a row because of that change. Those changes have positive impacts when you allow them to happen. For us, it's like I just keep walking into the wall. Maybe someday someone's going to tear down this wall, but I'm going to still keep walking the same fucking direction every day. And maybe something, maybe something will be different because I just like walking that way. It works for me. It just works for me. So put that comment back up, Phil. It doesn't, it doesn't matter the title. Ted has the fucking juice. Ted, Ted, Ted he's a McCaskey. Right. He yeah. is one of her children yeah. at this if, point. If George... Ryan Pace worked out the, the Khalil Mack deal right. and went to Ted Phillips and Ted said no, that deal's not happening. So that is a massive that's football, football decision. decision. That's not just president and CEO of, of finance and, and all of that shit. It's he has his fingers. Olin said today on his, or actually it was recorded yesterday on the No Name podcast. Guys, he was there every day. Ted Phillips runs the entire building from top to bottom. Olin Crute's words, not mine. Olin's. He's there every day and he runs every This is the guy that sh- sh- screwed around with the secretary, still kept his job, cheated on his wife. True story. Twice. This twice. This Two is a guy. Yeah. This is a guy that has caused every one of us fans emotional distress because he's the president and CEO. His new title or whatever they're trying to push is not answered. The GM is finally answering to me, the owner, the chairman, how they title people. is like a goddamn movie. You could give anybody a fucking title. The problem, there's no football guy to babysit the bullshit. Well, and this is part of the reason, and I'm not, this is going to sound like I'm crashing the Bears, level. but this is part of the allure of why the Bears gig is so coveted. Whoever becomes in here as the fucking GM, essentially, as long as you're not fucking, if if they'll make if the money will work, you f- essentially are going to be the fucking guy. Again. You want this job because Ryan Pace they, was the guy too. Right? They, cr- they, they nearly get cried. Guy. They, they, they nearly get cried guy. firing him. They nearly cried oh firing. They nearly him. cried, like you said, with Dick Jaron. Yes. This this family doesn't get the the end all be all in that whole thing for me. And we we can watch some of the stuff. Is Ted Phillips doubling down, praising as Shane said, the two men that fucked this franchise up and has lost and losing record. And you could, we all could cherry pick good things. We all could cherry pick good things, but the end of the day, it's winning. They don't mention winning in the whole thing. In fact, I would, I, I don't regret hiring. I don't regret hiring Matt Nagy. What are you fucking dumb Millhouse? Because that is the dumbest fucking thing you could ever say. Yes, I have my regrets. I regret that it didn't work out. I bet on Matt collaborating last year to improve, and he didn't. So, of course, I have regrets. For you to they were lie. forward thinking, Phil. But oh, yet, they were great leaders. But yet, we, we have one of, uh, until like week 12, we had the most anemic passing attack in the last oh decade God. plus. But they're forward thinkers. They're forward thinkers. You can't be friends. First, you have to be business partners first because at the bottom line, business is wins and losses. This isn't fucking fantasy football. We can't pick up and try to play again next year. This is football. And the most important thing out of all of this is going to be, well, now it's twofold. It's fucking GM and coach. How do they do it? Because right now, it's like my father said, there are a bunch of pussies out there. This organization, you cannot sell me how 
great this locker room is. We called that shit out well before any of it. Anybody. Right. Fucking lie. Of course they like him. He doesn't fucking hold anybody accountable. Eddie Jackson's out there saying anybody could tackle. Doesn't matter. Then proceeds to go out there and miss tackle after tackle after tackle. No accountability. But you're you don't gonna get paid bench. for making tackles. <laughs> you're gonna get. You're gonna bench. You're gonna bench fucking players that are actually performing. It's the same thing. Right. Cars. Here's your graphic. This guys, I want you to look long and hard about it. The structure that, as it is. This is what every first round pick since I've been born has been. This is every first round pick. Now you can look and if you, once you start getting past the 90s past the Mark Carriers, how many of those guys had multi-year impacts for this franchise? How many of these guys were game changers? How many of these guys, like, it's a bit overblown. We've had one guy in my lifetime that's drafted as a surefire Hall of Fame first ballot. Now, I think Devin Hester should be, but I don't know necessarily that he has. That, the, that the league will view right. him that way. Erlacher. But yeah. look at those names. So I'll, if you I look, can read them. It's brutal. Walt Harris. Oh, was Walt great. Curtis Enos followed up with Cade McNown, then Brian Erlacher. But David, like, look David at two thousand. Yeah. Look at David Terrell to Colombo to Grossman, Grossman and Haynes. Well, in Tommy Harris, Harris. To your point, if you look at two thousand one, this is where the tentacles. This is where the tentacles of Ted Phillips come into play. Yes, Mark Hatley. This was his last draft, and he unfortunately passed away. And then that's when the Bears pivoted and brought in Jerry Angelo after this draft. Yes. So 2001, the Bears drafted David Terrell, number eight overall. And initially leading up to that draft, there was a lot of talk that Terrell was actually going to go much higher. Mark Hatley on draft day had a deal worked out to move up to acquire LaDainian Tomlinson, who went to the San Diego Chargers. Ted Phillips nixed the deal over money. From moving to num from number eight to where did LT go? Fifth, oh, fifth, four or five. Yeah. So the bonus money was significant because you were getting up into the top five. So Ted Phillips nixed the deal. So now you're going from Ladanian Tomlinson, you get David Terrell. Okay. So now they got their wide receiver in the first round. They wanted a running back. So now it's not on this list. Now they get to round two. You remember that that year they went back to Michigan again. They took Anthony Thomas. Mark Hatley had another deal worked out to move from the their second round pick. I believe it was what like thirty five or wherever it was around there that year. He had a deal worked out to move up to move to the back end of the first round to draft who running back Deuce McAllister. McAllister. Ted Phillips list. didn't want the team to pay to 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 have hey, a second first, first round pick. He nixed the deal over finances. So in that draft alone, you Can't lost out shit. on Ladanian Tomlinson, a Hall of Fame running back, and Deuce McAllister. I mean, he and had a much his, better. Loop it, oh my god, well, better than if you go uh, the, back on Cars' list. Despite all of that, it just shows Ted and George and Michael, all of them needing to get the right person picking things. Right. Uh, players, you you, let me read it. Al Harris, Dan Hampton, Otis Wilson, Keith Van Horn, Jim McMahon, Willie Galt, Jimbo Covert, Wilbur Marshall, William the Refrigerator Perry, Neil Anderson, Jim Harbaugh, Wendell oh. Davis, Brad Muster, Trace Armstrong, Donnell Wolford, and Mark Carrier. Do you and remember those names? Go yes, back absolutely. To if you put absolutely. that back up there, you see that we didn't have a pick in 1997. That was because the Chicago Bears and Dave Wanstead Rick traded Meyer. Rick Meyer. The, the 11th. We I needed a tight end, Cars. They traded that pick to the Seattle Seahawks for Rick Meyer. 
which became and, Walter Jones. Yep, they ended up. The Bears, we were had they stayed Tony there, Gonzalez. were going to take Tony Gonzalez. And I forget the guy's name John that, was, that was in Seattle, Randy something. I don't know, maybe Cars, you can look that up. He was working in Seattle that, that draft. Oh, he, he was like, I can't believe. He took the call from Wanstead, and he, he knew that the Bears were going to be interested in Dennis Meyer. Erickson was the head coach, right? Yeah, it was Randy something. He ended up working for the Saints, too, I believe. Mueller, Randy Mueller, I think his name is. That's right. Yep. <laughs> so he had. <laughs> oh my god! He took the fucking phone call from Dave Lonnie. Wanstead, expecting to get a second or a third round pick. Randy said to Dave, "What is your best offer? If we could make this deal right now, give me your top offer." Dave Wanstead offered them the eleventh pick in the draft. Randy Mueller, and this is all documented, literally said, just a second, Dave, let me run this by somebody. He put the fucking phone on hold, and he said, I damn near passed out. I could not believe that this was happening. But that's what inept leadership gets you. It gets you Rick Meyer. And he yeah. never even threw a single touchdown pass in Chicago. Not one. And, Awful. and the reason this is important is if you want longevity, if you want consistent winning seasons, you have to do well in the draft. You have to stockpile picks. You have to make these picks hit. Look at some of these top 10. Curtis Enos, you know, David Turner, like all these guys, Cedric Benson. You only get so many limited bites at the apple for these big picks. And you have to hit a fair amount, right? Like, it's like baseball. If I go one for three, it is a great day. The Bears went one for ten, right? Like, that is consistently the portion. If you do not draft well, you now overpay in free agency for guys that aren't worth their value by and large, and you get into cap problems. So now you're you're spending bad money on top of bad draft picks I love Robert Quinn, but you're spending that money because Leonard Floyd wasn't the guy that you wanted him to be and drafted in the top 10 to be. Kevin White. Kevin White. And then you have to go out and do Allen Robinson. And actually, to a lesser extent, it's Marcus Wheaton and that awful group of people. Six million guaranteed for Marcus Wheaton. Every time you shortcut this process. Mitch Trubisky. You fuck yourself. It's the bottom line. It is the one thing the Bears have never gotten. I'm not going to draft a quarterback, but I'm going to trade up for Rick Meyer, who is right. street flat, and, flat out garbage. And think about this. Think about the logistics of this. And it's, it's. I know the game has completely changed, but in 1998, I was probably the most emotional I ever was during an NFL draft. I wanted Randy Moss, and I didn't give a fuck about who was oh. left in the draft. Yes. And I just, you Agreed. just, so everybody's heard the story oh with God. Walter, Randy, all that stuff. So I won't rehash that. But so 1998, you draft Curtis Enos within the top five. You can't sign, you can't get a contract worked out with him. So that that's when they went out and they signed. Remember they signed Bam Morris? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so they went and did that. Damn. Well, Curtis Enos, a top five pick at running back. Didn't start for the Bears. Okay, so now let's fast forward. 2004, Lovey comes in. The Bears have money. They're going to spend it in free agency. The Bears go out, and they sign a running back in free agency in Thomas Jones. Thomas Jones didn't blow up in year one, but you could see the promise. He was a young tailback that got drafted 2000, I believe, seventh overall. That was the Urlacher draft. Went Fell out Arizona. of favor there. Went to Tampa Bay after sure. that. Showed promise, so that's why he made some money in free agency. So the Bears signed him 2004. His arrow was pointing way up. Fucking workhorse. You, 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 just, you could see it in Thomas Jones. 2005 draft, yet again, the fucking Bears draft another running back. Running back. Top five overall. Cedric Benson. Cedric Benson. 
So within a span of seven years, the same NFL franchise drafted two running backs. Could have drafted Aaron within Rodgers. The, within the top five. And guess what, guys? They couldn't sign Cedric either. And he didn't fucking start. They had Take, to trade Thomas Jones. Take, just, what did they trade him for? Uh, uh, Not uh, even a second round pick. No, the right to sw- move up 39 picks. In the third round. That was a swap of third round. For the sorry. Jets, right? Yes. To the yeah. Jets. So they didn't even get a pick for him. And, and to your point, he was the best of everybody they had. They and traded him leader, and a pick. Mike Brown were the ultimate leaders on that team. It, it's, it is mind-numbing. These for, guys will tell you. The best ability is, is, is availability. But I just can't. You... Greg Olson is the other example, right? Like, we finally have a tight end after we pass on Gonzalez and all of these people. We finally get oh one. Oh, my God. And then we draft, we, we bring we in Mike Martz. Ma- and, Ma- and we won't. It, yes, for a guy who couldn't even, a blocking tight end who couldn't block. It's a fascinating. We, 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 tra- we traded for a quarterback who couldn't throw the ball. We draft. We traded for a blocking tight end that couldn't block. Couldn't block. I mean, Brandon Malo Maliuna. That's oh, do you Brandon remember when they they Malu, brought out that press Maliuna. conference? That was the same year. Chester that, Taylor. They, they they signed Julius Peppers because don't forget. Let's Peppers. not forget this one. While I'm I'm sitting here taking you down memory lane and kicking you square in the balls, we're not going to forget about this one. Jerry Angelo and crew also sent a second round pick to the Tampa Bay Bucks for. 26 year old Gaines Adams. What? Seven games for us, maybe. I think he may, maybe he had one sack or a sack and a half. And then he died in his sleep in his bed at 26 years old. And it was a bad trade before that, even. Like, people, yeah. it was kind of similar to the Meyer thing where people are yeah. like, you're going to give us a what for him? Yeah. Yeah, we'll take it. Oh my God. So then they had to go out and pay and listen for Julius Peppers. That's why they would not have signed they Julius have Peppers. It, they didn't. The reason, but this is where it all ties in, Phil. They traded for Cutler then, so they didn't have a first rounder. Then they doubled back. They traded for Gaines Adams. So they now they didn't have a second rounder, and I believe in that draft their third rounder was their first pick, and it was that fucking. Was- Jaron Gilbert, the pool jump jumper. out of the pool. So third, that third rounder, and then they ended up taking. They had two threes, I believe it was Jaron Gilbert and Joaquin Iglesias, and neither one of the Jaron Gilbert played five games for the Bears. Joaquin Iglesias played one special team snap for the Minnesota Vikings as a third rounder. That was your boy, the Beast. Remember CBFans.net, Dan Bazin, oh. second rounder, never fucking played a snap of NFL football <laughs> in a regular season game. Second rounder. Oh my God. crazy. Well, Kenneth, Kenneth, what the Kenneth hell is going saying on? And and again, the reason we bring this all up is the structure that was in place to make these decisions yeah. is the same structure that is in place today. That's and is little... too good to be changed. Too good. But they'll let changed. them make these moves. That's not the point. They're going to let them make the moves. Sort there's of. Just, yeah, there's just no accountability. and let it, They'll make them accountable when it comes to some of the finances. But if it's a pure football move, they have no fucking clue. You think Ted Phillips knows how to attack a fucking cover two defense? He probably doesn't oh. even know what the fuck a cover two. I mean, cover two, That's he's covering two secretaries. That's it. It's not a fucking. <laughs> it's it's weird though, right? Because Dave Wanstead is held accountable for Rick Meyer. Yeah, but Ted Phillips is not held accountable for LT or Deuce, right? Yeah. Like we again, it. I, I tie so much. I don't know how Chicago has gotten some of the worst ownership in every sports era whatsoever. But it literally is, if you can't ever, and this this is to life, if you can't ever look at yourself and be in like, every, everybody else is the problem, it's not me. I hate to break it to you. You're the fucking problem. Like, yeah. everybody has yeah. their flaws. Everybody has their <laughs> They are the Michael blinder. Scott 
yes run organization <laughs> yes yes like if they you think if they you, mean well meanwhile they're offending everybody in the room they never have a good plan they're fucking renting a boat in the middle of winter to go on and have a yeah, it's a like i don't pool. want to if it's like they're the group that says i don't want to offend anybody but and you're like you're right. about to offend every person right, exactly. in this room right now yeah. i'm not racist but and you're like, like i know exactly no, like what's about it's, like the, it's like the comments in, in youtube tomorrow <laughs> love yeah. your guys show but but, <laughs> but that open that's yeah, that soft, opens too long you guys don't have to tell everybody you're right or you know all oh, that you should have never had olin on why well, didn't you talk to that's, him about muscle that's for, just the frustration it's, it's the head the head coaches and the general managers and the the that the personnel guys they've all changed there's been one Plenty constant one one and it's been fun the, the ownership you're i don't give a fuck you could say, don't go Jerry to the game it's not, not even logical it's ted phillips has been there for it all for it all and you heard george say well we're a wins and losses based <laughs> yeah well what the fuck does that mean george but that's why I told Cars you weren't on yet. I told Phil that's why they were so heartbroken with Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace, because as shitty as their win percentage was, it was infinitely better than George and Ted's. So they are like, "Look at these motherfuckers up on the mountaintop." I mean, we got it. <laughs> three games over four over five hundred. Exactly, is the second best winning percentage under <laughs> under. <laughs> under him like literally three games over 500 yeah. is a beacon to this franchise right now that we're doing something right and i'm sorry and phil is correct and matt Nagy can sit and collect his guaranteed dollars by not doing anything this year and that's fine but if there was a huge belief in matt Nagy throughout the nfl as the ultimate leader and head coach and he just got shafted in chicago people would be lining up brian flores like just flores. got, brian just got flores fucking quit or did, just got fired and he's got a fucking interview here on friday it says a lot it's just like the shit and i i don't want to go down this fucking vortex but i find myself doing it all the time it's just like the shit with mitch oh he's he's gonna leave chicago he's going to the bill belichick's gonna know what to do with him Kyle Shanahan's going to know what to do with him. He's going to go there and they're going to win. Neither one of them fuck. Kyle Shanahan wanted to trade three fucking first round draft picks for Trey Lance. Mitch Trubisky signed for $2.5 million. Bill Carson Belichick Wentz got a first round exactly. pick for the Philadelphia Eagles. Bill Belichick drafted a kid in the first round Matt when he could have had Mitch baby. for $2.5 million. These guys will tell you. The best abilities is, is, is availability. It's 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 mind numbing. Matt Nagy like, was good, Shane. What what are you talking about? He, he look at his win. Look at the. No, I'm sorry. We'll yeah, take our victory lap. Right here, though. Say what you want about Lovey, but they fired him after ten win season. They did, but the the. There nothing, was so much more. There was no, what was your offense? The offense. Had never been fixed, and there was you talk about performance over politics. It wasn't so much the players, it was Ron Rivera, Great. not resigning you, Bullet Bob, my boy, Bullet oh. Bob Babich. He's coming in. It's 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 so sad, man. And it's we went through five or six offensive coordinators at that point. We could never Terry get that. Shea? Terry Shea, Terry Shea was the first offensive coordinator. Here and I actually this is came from demented, Kansas City. This is how demented I am. Yeah, and that's why we got Ron fucking, Turner. That's why we got the quarterback there, Jonathan Quinn. That's John why he was Quinn. an amazing backup. Steve for Edwards us. called him the worst quarterback oh he's ever God. witnessed. Phil, in his it was life. terrible, terrible. <laughs> Who else was an offensive coordinator with Lovey? There was Turner, so Marks, Martz. Who um, was that? Very, John Shoop. No, was that, was, that, that was that, Jerron. that was Gary Croton. Gary Croton. That was Jerron, I believe, as well. Yeah. Hold on. Was it? 
Yeah. yeah. So, I thought yeah. Croton was a lovey guy for some reason. So it was Shea, Shea Ron, Ron Turner. Turner. Then so I'm clicking Liam. through. Mike Martz. Mike oh, Tice. Mike Tice. Mike Tice. Right? Mike Tice. That was the other four guys. And then we went into the glory of the Aaron Cromer era. And we did it all for the glory. I'm just a fan. I'm not a football evaluator. No, you're not. But you will be in charge of picking. But it's your decision. The football GM and the coach. That's like me choosing a the salad. I don't eat it if it's green, but I'm going to go ahead and choose the salad that everybody else is going to eat. Like what what the hell is this? I, I just don't get it. But this is what they got this is what they got to change and they do have a chance here Phil and it's a perfect time for you to bring this up. To put that put put it right up there. There you go. That so Leslie Frazier to me is a no. Doug Peterson I have zero interest in. No. Dayball no. Hackett is interesting. I don't think he's ready. He was here in Syracuse. Every place that he's been, they've improved on offense. Todd Bowles is a guy that I like. Mm-hmm. Left which I know Cars is big on. I just I I don't know enough about Byron the, the Cars. You and I talked about it a little bit last night. My thing is, I look at to me the one guy that stands out that's gonna fucking walk upstairs and take the fucking room over. And not be afraid of the fucking owner and tell them exactly what he needs, what he wants, and not give a fuck about ruffling feathers is the guy there on the bottom, Brian Flores. That's that's it. Well, that's what Olin said. Everybody in the room, you got uh, Nick Saban was going to be the head coach of the Chicago Bears. People always forget this. Very close with Jerry Angelo. Jerry Angelo and him are friends. It came down to Jerry not giving Nick right of the roster go back and look at this he was going to take the job jerry would not give up the 53 man roster control because he was a nick he was a new gm yes so nick bounced on that ended up the next year we end up hiring lovey smith or dick geron i can't remember it might have been dick geron in the last no i think dick I think Dick was. No, I think it he was inherited. Smith. He it inherited was. Dick for. That's sorry. He <laughs> he took over when Mister Gerard was still the coach. And his this first- invention here is called the Cobb Quickie. Hands down, the easiest. <laughs> it, but you know, I, I got to pull back for a second. You know, it's funny when Olin was saying like, uh, if you hire a Nick Saban. Like the lunchroom people have to be that's in and it. If you that's why there was, Jim Harbaugh, Flora, the man has to be. Uh, that's there was just, a TikTok, and it, my kids are obsessed with them. And it was Alabama, and it was Nick okay. Saban at a practice, and he's go- complaining like they brought me new shoes. These shoes suck. I asked for a water. Those guys get Propel. Why do I get this shit? Right, like. And, and part of it is is tongue in cheek, but part of he, he's like my shoes are uncomfortable, so I'm going to get in somebody's ass today. Like we never like those things is ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, and- bring that fat ass over here. I wanna get it in my mouth. I wanna get it in my mouth. Suck on that ass, baby. I- <laughs> but it, you need those people, and and we talk about it. But the reason the reason Phil's guy isn't on that list is because he would want changes. It's why I don't think Flores, as much as I want him, is going to be the guy because he's going to want changes. But this is place. where we have to pray, not to cut you off. No, you're Bill right. Bill Polian knows. He's probably, and I hate to say it like this, but he's the whitest guy that can push back on these guys. Yes. You follow what I'm saying. Yeah. He could push they're- back on George and they don't, they're not uncomfortable. Like Olin would make them uncomfortable. And it, absolutely. Bill Polian, 
He's whatever older. Whatever reason. He's older, he's wiser, and he's white. I, I'm. That's just, if that makes you uncomfortable, that's what the McCaskies are. Uncomfortable. That's why and, they put out this whole full court press on diversity and yada, yada, yada. At the end of the day, are they going to fucking hire the right guy? You're worried that Flores is going to ruffle feathers. Well, it's not just let's but, win fucking games. Yeah, if you talk about it, it, it with Brian Flores comes in, the to me, the number one question I'm asking is who is going to be your offensive coordinator? Who's going to yep. be your offensive line coach? Because I mean, those that is where the question marks because this is going to be the Justin Fields oh show God, exactly. moving forward. And that's that's sure. going to be that's going to be a big OC? part of it. You know what? And I look at this this way. Like, please don't get me wrong. I think a head coach is extremely important. I, to a degree, I don't give a shit who the head coach is because that GM position is so important for what you're going to do, how you add talent, where you're going to expand these things. Yes, the head coach is extremely important. But I'll tell you, if you go out and you get Flores and you pick, Ted Phillips, illegitimate love child with a, a secretary as your uh, <laughs> as your general manager, like it's not going to make a difference. You it, it ha you have to get the right general manager in, and who's going to come in. It's why I'm so big on Dodds and and Smith in these interviews because if oh, they're going to yeah. come in and they come in and say, "Look, this is it. This is what we have to do with the structure." I'll go back to Marvin Lewis. That's exactly what he did. We've got to grow the scouting department. We've got to start adding analytics. We have to do all of these things. And if you're willing to make that commitment, then I will come here. And if my gut is if it's not one of those two, it's because the Bears once again said, no, we're right. not going to do that. We're going to go with one of these other guys who will just right. take it as it is. If, that if they interfere with truth of what Cards is saying, they did it with Ballard. They did it with someone else, right? They didn't hire these guys because of truth. They didn't want to hear it. The convenience of what they've already done matters more. That's the problem. What? And, and let me just say this, because Shane made the great point, so I'll let you explain it. But Jim Harbaugh isn't going to be on a list because right. he can't afford – recruits or players to go in the transfer portal or anything. It's going to be quiet. Yeah. It's going to Harbaugh be or Ryan day is going to be the head yeah. coach. You're just going to all of a sudden hear the news broke that Jim At two o'clock in the morning. The, yeah. That Jim yeah, Harbaugh exactly. is the next coach of the Chicago bears. You're not going to say Jim Harbaugh is interviewing here next Wednesday. No, that will not gonna... never happen. That's why exactly. people are saying, how come they're not talking about Harbaugh? They're not going to because never. they would have, 30 kids in the transfer portal just like that if they fuck what happened with Saban when he was leaving LSU and ended up yeah. at Miami right like I yeah. if, if this falls through I can't give up my national championship shot yeah you can throw Morocco Brown in here and the thing with Dodds is well, those yeah, I'll I, put the GMs our right guy Aaron Lemon. we got to get him back on the show with his camera Shane yeah Aaron he Lemon. was on there the is. other network tonight I don't know if he was with oh, his camera no. <laughs> was he? But anyways, here is my poker game. And you, you can take those down just for a second, Phil, because I'm going to talk about two guys. I'm going to talk about the two indie guys, Morocco okay. Brown. Morocco Brown was here, so he knows you know, some of the inner workings. But word has been that Chris Ballard has openly been campaigning for Morocco Brown to get a GM gig throughout the NFL. Well, I said to Phil, me thinking the way that I think is that's Ballard saying, just don't take my guy Dodds. Yes. You right. can take this guy. It's fine. I love Morocco Brown, but I don't want to lose Dodds. To me, that's part of the poker game. Now, where this continues with both of these guys. So let's just say Dodds is the guy. He's obviously, he's the right-hand man. He's the number one for Chris Ballard. Do you think that they're going to have a fucking talk and that he's not going to come to Hallis Hall with a fucking laundry list of saying, I know the story with this dude. Or Chris, I know. Ted is punted. 
If I you know want where this job. I, don't. I know say where the fucking skeletons are on the fucking right. third floor and down in the fucking basement. He's gonna come here just like Morocco Brown can. And that's what I'm saying. That's where, to me, if Flores gives you a viable plan on offense with his coaching staff, with a guy that's going to come in and isn't afraid to speak his mind to management, to ownership, and a guy like Dodds coming in with that extra ammo at his disposal, and, oh, yeah, He's fucking amazingly good at his job. Mm -hmm. To me, that's very, very appealing. And don't dismiss what I just said. I, I plead with you because there's poker involved in all of this. Don't What's think that over one... there. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. There's hope, guys. There's, there's hope. I hope if there's hope. Got the right... We hope there's hope, Shane. And it's the same. So. It's the same with Rick Smith, right? And Rick I know Jamar Smith. keeps saying, like these are two guys. The reason I'm bigger on Daz over Morocco is he's been an assistant GM. It's super hard to find guys like Rick that have been there in the position and done it. But you see with the guys that are like, I'm the, I've been the Ryan Pace. I've been the director of pro personnel, and that's as far up as I've gone. Like once you start getting into these assistant roles where you have like assistant team where you have more responsibilities than just college or pro and you're kind of in this mesh point where all of these things kind of come together that that to me has real value. Rick Smith is on this list because what he did with Houston, the way that they drafted, the way that they competed, you know, that absolutely does it, and it's why those two guys are. I'm stealing from Phil are one A, one B, and nobody else is is two, three, or four for me. That's it. Yeah. Dodd and Rick Smith. Yes. Yeah. No, I I would agree with cars there, because listen, Rick Smith was doing fantastic. He he didn't get he left because he was doing what was right as a fucking family man because his yep. wife was sick. Right. You know, I agree. I said, you, you look at the you look at how that fucking that franchise was Thelma and Louise. They went right the fuck off that cliff after that dude left. You know, right. you have to think about that. And I, I agree with cars. And this is where we have our synergy is that, you know, we we agreed on a lot of stuff last year in the draft. And I think we're kind of pointing the the you know, needle in the same direction here in terms of leadership and, and bringing the, bringing these, these guys in, but it's, I saw somebody in there saying, maybe it was the factor. I think had it in there that Craig Gabriel said that he would, he worked with Dodds and wouldn't want to work with him. That's a pl plus that, for me. That's, that's, that's fine. He knows Morocco Brown and he, he openly promoted Morocco Brown. He also said that he would, you know, run to the podium to draft the fucking guy the Bills took in the was it the third fucking Nathan Peterman. You'd have no problem drafting him in round two. So that and that's not even a shot at Greg. I'm just saying that shit happens. None of this is a perfect process. We've all had our swings, misses. Greg has, I have, Phil has, Cars has. There's always been those guys, but I'm just just because Greg Gabriel doesn't like the guy doesn't that's I would I would sure I would say why don't you like him, Greg? You know, if you do have that big of a problem, why go talk about it on the network that you talk with? Share the story. Why? If that's the, if that's the deal, but yeah. that's fine. It, it, it's to the me other that's guy was deciding factor. The dude that was interviewed today, the GM from yeah. uh, Cleveland. He's not on the list here. Um, yeah, oh, from Cleveland. Yeah, I have a list here. No, he he uh, he's updated the list. So yes, Glenn Cook uh, was Glenn interviewed Cook. today. Glenn Cook is an interesting guy. I mean, but again, he has not been a GM before. And Bill Polian, who ha is a Hall of Fame GM and has had a lot of success, you're happy that he's in this role to assess them moving forward. How? How does Rick Smith rank with Bill Polian will be interesting because obviously they played against each other 
or competed against each other when Rick was with the Houston and they're with the Colts. So and he's one of the few that he doesn't have direct ties with. I think Elliot Wolf is probably the Elliot only Wolf, other one that Elliot that Wolf, Pulley doesn't. Cars well, Pulley you, would know Ron. Yes, Wolf. sure. And Cars, you know this. Ooh, did I just lose you guys? No. All right, I hit my thing. All right. Um, Rick Smith was actually a name a few months ago that was tied to Chicago that the Bears yes. were interested in. So I wouldn't forget about that. I'm in, I according he's the clubhouse leader for me. According to Hogan Johns on their latest podcast, Bill Polian hasn't been here doing this just for a handful of days. Yeah. It's been multiple <laughs> weeks. Right. Yeah. So that that tells you that tells I think you right Polian there. was the one who turned them ass over tea kettle and said no, Pace has to go. He's I, no, a hundred percent. If Polian yeah. is not, if it wasn't here, for him. Ryan Pace is still here, a hundred percent. Exactly. So that gives me hope. Yep. Now, and I've shared. I said it last week, and I said it on the patron show. If you're not a patron, go over there right now. The tape never lies.com. We're going to be breaking down tape and all of this stuff. Live pop up shows with the new hiring all over there but i'm gonna say this my uncle who i respect so much was very adamant about finally the chicago bears have a guy that's going to at least at the very least he's going to give them the best person that's going to be gm now are they going to hire the coach before the gm i'm with olin online i would have i would love for them just to get the gm first I, then let the him Giants show us you. why you can't. You, you can't go hire a GM if Joe Judge is your coach. If you hire exactly. Brian Flores, and I think, he, again, I think he's great, but it probably eliminates some of those guys on that list who may may not want to. It, it You can't. I, I agree. Can't. I think you got to get the GM first. And, and I think at this point they do. probably know – the connections, I, I, I'm sure they probably know if Rick Smith is interested in Brian Flores. Listen, I think in their oh, mind, yeah. they know who right. they kind of think may get this job. But obviously, they're doing their due. Because the, if you look back, the the GM search when Ryan Pace, it was Ryan Pace, Brian Gain, uh, Lake Dawson, and Chris Ballard. I believe there's only four. Wasn't yes. there one more? There was one more. Wasn't it the light? Or well, that might have oh. been before him. Yeah, I don't know. Might have been. Remember the guy from New England? Yeah, Jason Light, who was Jason. down in Tampa. Yeah, but it was him. more of a compressed list. Right. And if, well, there's been some overlapping, but Cars, you brought this up, and it was a great point when you were comparing the Giants list to the Bears initial, the Giants initial list, and then the Bears. It was, completely no fucking different there was it was two totally different sets of people and to me that is where i was impressed that's where i started to pivot a little bit more on polian because i'm like this dude's casting a lot and it does it doesn't matter if you're the the one guy other guy from cleveland the the i, I blanking on his name he's got the the i believe he's nigerian what was his the Al? no uh the um yeah, we need the Quasi Adolfo list. Mensa. But so that's a guy that's totally based in analytics. That's where he's I mean he And that's I, a guy I, you interview sure to pair up with somebody else. Well, you hear yeah. like Denver when they're interviewing Dan Quinn and they're interviewing like I can't remember the the coordinator for or the guy in Green Bay and they're interviewing Jared yeah. Mayo. That those guys are saying are going to be part of Dan Quinn's staff. It sounds like Dan Quinn to Denver's already done. You mm -hmm. do that there too. If you go out and draft or, or assign uh, Rick Smith, who's really good at drafting, hey, here's an analytics guy handpicked for you to pair up so you can add that to your portion. That Sorry, that, I get really excited about nerdy front office stuff. Well, the other thing is, 
I saw a couple questions here. Vic Fangio, we don't even know if Vic is going to continue coaching. He might roll off into the sunset. He has not well, he's stated. He's not a young man either, right? Yeah, he's not stated, but. Get in somebody's guys... ass today. What's that? <laughs> what? Get in somebody's ass today. Get in somebody's ass today. Fantastic. <laughs> that totally confused me. <laughs> like, I thought it was really happening. Get in somebody's ass today. <laughs> I thought my screen like popped. That's funny. But yeah, uh, Sean Desai. I don't see that he's coming back with a whole new coach. I mean, the coach is going to have to decide on that. Obviously, I don't know if, what his contract is because sometimes these coaches hold on for dear life. The new coach will interview them out of kindness and decide who. I mean, we've yes. seen it before. We've seen it before here with John Fox got fired. Jay Rogers and his brother stayed on for that first year. The size has been here since Trestman. Yeah. yeah. So we could see. I don't I don't like the side. <laughs> I've watched enough. I just any defensive coordinator that can't see that when you're in man and you're getting turnovers and pressures and you're helping your defense then challenge your team to play more man. And when it's third and 15 and you're dropping in zones and they just pick you apart and you have no accountability for the corn, the, excuse me, the safety, Eddie Jackson. I, I oh, just, yeah. I don't. First, here's your, this is Rick Smith, the former GM in Houston. When you're talking about the ones former bear down there, 2007, a Moby, Okoye, he was, I believe, the youngest draft player, player ever, ever in the NFL, 19 He ended years up old. coming to the Bears. Yeah, he did. Yep. Was Dwayne the, Brown was a, a still all playing. pro. Cushing still was playing. rookie of the year. All, Kareem Jackson. All, he made the all-steroid team, too. Brian yes. Jake J. Yeah. Watt. I mean, Whitney Merciless over Shea McClellan. Kevin, <laughs> all day, yeah. Kevin Deion. Johnson is probably the biggest question mark out of everybody in there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, all of those other That's, guys. I would That's take a, any one of those. Those are well, better. You can disagree with some of the players on the list, but it's a hell of a lot better looking than ours. <laughs> That's exactly. But just, just the receiver alone. Yeah. yeah. But again, he was picking very high that year. Um, this this whole thing is going to be rooted in hopefully Bill Polian pushing aside the ego of one Ted Phillips. And if you learned anything tonight from Olin and cars going down memory lane, it and Shane, it is a showcase Do you of Ted interfering each and every time with somebody and, and the Bears organization moving forward in the right direction. Go ahead. Do you think something that they haven't talked about, I brought it up, I think, with you cars early this morning we were talking about it and Phil, I know I mentioned it to you too with Khan, with him being more of a, you know, finance based guy. Do you think that there's any outside shot that they bring him into the I, mix? I thought about this guy. I got to answer. If they bring him into the mix, he's tied to Mark Sadowski. They work together in new Orleans. And mm -hmm. Sadowski, I believe, has... He's interviewed, right? Well, no, he's there, but he's he's survived regime changes. I Sadowski. believe so as well. Emery, he started with Emery, right? Sadowski? Jesus, I don't know. I'll have he's, to look uh, into that. Might have been. But Sadowski apparently is interviewing for the GM position. Well, that's what I'm saying. was a scout in 2006 for us, at least. So, yeah. So, no, it wouldn't have been. So, he would have been a guy that Jerry Angelo brought. Oh, yeah. And so, he's been he here for a long good. time. But I was wondering if this is a, a scenario that we haven't mm -hmm. talked about that the Bears, because listen, and I, we're going to give credit where credit is due, and we don't agree with everything, but the Bears blog has, had the information before anybody on the way that this went down with Pace and, and um, Matt Nagy and even with the candidates. So we're going to give him his credit there. Model. 
He's also reporting that Ted Phillips is retiring in 2023. That's a done deal locked in. So my point is, are the Bears potentially looking at a guy like Khan to come in now, get involved with Ted, with Arlington Heights, to take over that role next year? while you promote an in-house guy like Sadowski to GM? Uh, I hope not. I don't know. I don't think they would do it to promote. I think I think that they, they would look at it as, again, this is, sorry, I don't normally deal in ifs, um, but um, I, I do think, right, they, they have to start worrying about the handoff for yeah. that role. Yep. especially because the stadium is probably going to have to go up by 2025, right? So they've got a limited window here to move this. And if he retires in 2023, you kind of want someone in-house there working alongside and moving that forward. Yep. So it wouldn't shock me. Well, actually, I take it back. It would completely shock me because it would be the right thing for them to do. Yeah, is to start hiring. Thinking, right. uh, yes, they would be hiring a replacement. But I do think um, I do think that it it's in pl- not, it's still in play that he would come in, but they would also still hire a different GM than they want to admit. She agrees with the decisions w- that we've made. She's pissed off. Fuck out of here, Ted. <laughs> Logan, that's, that's, go, Logan, going that's not the that's not the point. I'm if you would just step back and listen to what I just said. I'm telling you, the Bears blog has had this lockdown this stuff on he, lockdown. The Bears blog source is a McCaskey. We've discovered or Ted this. Phillips. Or so Ted my point, my himself. point is, he is reporting multiple times that Ted is 100 percent done. In 2023. With that said, Shane is saying this, Logan. In the there you go. Here's my theory that I thought about today, guys. Bill Polian strategically understands the issue is Ted. So he's bringing in somebody to show Virginia and George that there's other answers than Ted. And this might be a brilliant guy who Bill Polian knows the Rooney family and 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 how they speak well, so about the this guy. The McCaskies, and yeah, but they don't know. They, it doesn't seem like they, they talk know about very tea well. and crumpets. They don't talk about football. <laughs> hey, you guys win. That's weird. Um, oh. Like that. Like, yeah, I can't sorry. believe you kept Big Ben after that rape thing. <laughs> oh, good, good lordy, lordy, it's fucking Flanders and Millhouse running the bear. I, I couldn't again, knock it out any better. I wouldn't be shocked if you were right about that, Phil. But again, how sad is it that the charter (laughs) franchise for the NFL that has, you know, how do you grow up working for a team and not know shit about football? And it is killing me on the inside that we go to Bill Polian and I have to put all my hope and dreams. And it's nothing against Bill Polian, the man. It's nothing to do with the Lamar Jackson need, you know, should play wide receiver. Look, all these guys have done and and made stupid statements and stupid words, but he is so well connected. And all the eggs and all the hopes and dreams that we have for this franchise is rooted in a guy who's 79 years old, who's never played or worked for the Bears to make the right decisions and make them so simple that even George McCaskey can't screw it up. That's our hope like that. All of this, it's all in play, but in the end (laughs) he's going to go up and he's going to be like, it's going to be the matrix, right? Here's your red pill and your blue pill, right? Which one are you going to take? And I don't have confidence. They're going to take the right one. Don't worry, Ted and I have this again. Yes, yes. George, George dyed his hair. 
George dyed his hair. <laughs> there they are. Millhouse and Flanders. Here's some of the quotes. I trust Ted. Oh. I am a fan. Shane's the only audio. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Yep. The GM reports to me. I would take what Olin says with a grain of salt. We are going to do a thorough, diligent. We are going to be thorough, diligent, and exhaustive. That's our owner right there. Mister. He's the guy in charge. He's a fan of this team. Just, I'm just a fan. I'm not a football evaluator. No, he's not. We saw the Ted Phillips stuff. We saw that George is just a fan. Speaking of fans, if Cherie could put up right here. Cheers. It's 2022. And resolutions you can actually keep. How about upgrading your grooming routine for the new year? I'm not talking about Claudio, the barber. I'm talking about our sponsors at Manscaped are here to make the ball drop in 2022 the cleanest ever. Set your first New Year's resolution with good intentions and join me and the 4 million other men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Go to Manscaped and use the code Shy City Sports. Is that the code? I always forget the code. Get in somebody's ass today. <laughs> Shy City Sports for 20% off. That's 20% off. Shy City Sports. Use that code. Um, it's New Year's, a new me with the global leaders in male grooming this year. Take your grooming to the next level, the Performance Package 4.0, and the brand new Ultra Premium Body Wash. I got this body wash and shampoo. I'm telling you, my wife has sung its praises. I have wild hairs coming out of your nose or ear, Tom Boson. Well, Manscaped can solve that problem too with the Weed Whacker. The, this nose and ear trimmer, Logan, would be in heaven. Has 9,000 RPMs, motor-powered, 360-degree rotary, dual-blade system to, to provide proprietary skin-safe technology, which helps prevent, prevent nicks, not foals, snags, and tugs. And I'm not talking about Ted with the secretary in those delicate holes. Polish off the new Stella routine with a free gifts, including Manscaped Shed Travel Bag. Kick discomfort and poor hygiene to the curb this year and use the best tool for the job. Whether your resolution is to work more or travel to new places, be sure manscaped.com for your exclusive offer of 20% off plus free shipping with the code Shy City Sports. Cheers to grooming with the best in 2022. That's Manscaped. Yes! Look at that. Look at that. A little Manscaped read tonight. Hopefully you get your Manscaped on. Um, obviously, the show is much different tonight. We had Olin Krutz. I don't know how amazing that could possibly be even more so. Just talking about four years of ineptitude to, to just the point with which George McCaskey takes this moment a historic moment and attacks first butters and manipulates and then attacks a former hall of fame football player or former player that should be in the hall of fame now hey cut it out what are you talking about yeah, you must have been at the top of your fucking class it's claudio the barber Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Just cut it out. 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 
Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Man, cut that shit out. Cut it out. Cut it out. It's Cut It Out with Claudio the Barber. Hey, you, you gotta let me talk, Phil. Hey, you gotta let me speak. Claudio is gonna be bringing a new sense to keeping it a hundred. It's Cut It Out with Claudio on the Tape Never Lies Network. Cut it out. Cut it out has been cut out. I guess Phil didn't get the memo. There is no cut it out tonight. <laughs> Look at him so, getting out of this. Why is he getting out of the job? There is no shit. cut it out tonight, man. I've been smoke one- weed every day. I thought there was tweets. I thought there was. I don't give a fuck that he smokes weed. They all smoke weed. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> my god we no, need no you cut it claudia you started playing that at first like, claude like sits up he's like i'm like wait stuff. a minute <laughs> like, you, have, you, for real? you have nothing <laughs> prepared no i dude i didn't get a chance Just what do i do with my hands, hands right now dude, it's almost 12 <laughs> o'clock bro it's almost 12 oh, o'clock this is claudio the barber yo this is claudio the barber yo this is claudio the barber Yo, this is Claudio the Barber. Yo, this is Claudio the Barber. Yo, this is Claudio the Barber. <laughs> There's no show without Claudio. No oh, hey, Claudio. We should have recorded that first oh, jam God. session with Claudio when he was so nervous. Oh, we did 186 that yos. That was rough. Yo. I, I was just remember Phil. Phil. Phil being like, you got to be hype. You got to be hype. You got to do this. Because you gotta, like the first couple were like, yo, it's Claudio. And you're like, come on, man. Like, let's I got go. This, I got this right. notepad of every single week that we've done this. This is really? from the first week. This is, this is my Read open. It. Let me hear. Let's see what you got. Let's it's hear so it. bad. No, no, no. It's a page. <laughs> it's the wait, first wait, page wait, is literally just wait, yo. Wait. Do it the right way, Claude. Hold on. Yeah, there is yo. Hold on. Where is it? There it is. Where is it? Yo, there it is. Yo, need a tagline. What am I? <laughs> what was Claudio's practice? I think we had to delete it, right? No, it was this. He would practice like this. The Tape Never Lies Network. The Tape Never Lies. Tape Never Lies starts never lies. now. Tape never lies. The Tape Never Lies. That's that that was it. just as prepared as the first time. I want everybody to know. <laughs> to, he was, Yo, this is Claudio <laughs> the Barber. I've gotten a lot better. I've gotten a lot. You better. have, but I you have. just dropped the but ball again, the, right there. Why well, didn't I? Yo's honestly, wasn't even listening. So delayed to you. on my end. Like, oh my god! Literally, even three tonight. Seconds. Yeah, dude. Tonight. I usually wait until I see myself. I told you, there's no like. <laughs> How I come just wait everybody till I see myself and then I say yo. Claudio gets lost in his own eyes is really what yeah, happens. Every true. time he sees himself on screen, he's like, who is that? Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> Shit. Uh, let's go. All right. I'm going to do uh, a test shit. with Claudio on Real Quick. After Real Quick, or is that the shortest one? Or Nerd Alert. Then I want you to do yo. I'm going to do it for you. Ready? Nerd Alert. Yo, this is Claudio the Barber. I got you, yeah. Okay. But the open is different. The open that's no, that's no, a different that, thing. It's the no. same shit. Okay, go ahead. I'll do I'll do it. We want we want we want the full Monty on this one. Here we go. Full the Monty. Big test, the big test. Nerd alert. Yo! No, <laughs> no it was there. Start it <laughs> over. Let him know. <laughs> you were so late. I'm going when I see myself. Do I'm it, Phil. Do right, it. One more time. Nerd this- alert. Yo! <laughs> that is almost as hard as I laughed as one at one of the Angelo segments, and that's for sure. Oh, I have those clips. Those are Listen, always. We ready love to go. Claudio here. Yes. Jackal bounced on us. There is Jack no was healing up. He's healing. We're up. not even doing bear up, bear down. It's no, like, we're gonna fuck keep that yeah. team. 
That's right. That team is so 2008. You 2008. Right, let's late. do this. You can bring Cherie in here. Cherie! <laughs> she's like, she's like, oh shit, here we go. There she is, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. She's been countdown to Mark Rebellius on the screen. Hey, Potsy, this is Cherie. <laughs> TTNL Network. Did she tweet at him or no? I'm still single. <laughs> oh, bring that fat ass over here. I want to get it in my mouth. I want to get it in my mouth. In somebody's ass today. <laughs> it works. It, it works. Work. It totally that works. That step is sick. What do you think ours does all day? <laughs> poor girl. <laughs> that all poor right, woman so is a let's saint. Let's go around the room. Give me some fucking names. Give me- I asked. I asked. Oh, I was going to play that when he was Tyron on. Ar- I, wanna, I am. I didn't want to. I am pissed scared off. of a Toronto arms. His, you look at his no, snap I, counts year to year, bro. It's oof. oh, it's not good. <sighs> but anyways, let's go around the room. Phil, we'll start with you. Okay. All the when, pre- when, mm-hmm. and who <laughs> is the first signing for the Bears in terms of GM? Mm-hmm. Head coach. Oh man, the net is so wide that. So you want? Let me be clear here. You want who are they gonna? Are they gonna hire the GM or the coach first? That's yeah, part me, of your question. Who's gonna be? Who's gonna be hired? Give me a name, and you you may think you, that they're gonna hire a head coach, but I want to know a time frame. When do you think that this goes yeah, down? I don't. I first, I don't think. It's going to be at least two to three weeks Oof, I that don't. they hire I somebody. Don't. And here, I believe it's going to be like my, I'm leaving my heart out. I'm just going into the room of them. I believe it's going to be Rick Smith, the GM, and Todd Bowles, the coach. That's what I believe they're going to do. There you go. So that leaves me then, huh? Mm-hmm. That leaves you. We're yeah. going. I think th- I think that they're going to hire Rick Smith. Oh, we're both. I do. I, we haven't talked about this yet. Yeah, I don't like he's he's in my like car said he's in my top two. I'm very, very intrigued by Dodds. Me too. But I just I don't know. I don't know. I just I, I have a feeling like they're going to they're going to they're going to sign and i i think it's going to i think it's going to go rather quickly at gm that's that's really? my my well, feeling well, i said two weeks two to three weeks oh i think it, i think you could hear something by monday wow cuz yeah it does, they only have I, scheduled for you know how i don't think you're going to see schedules schedule? I don't, and you look at guys like Leslie and some of these guys that are in the playoffs. We're not going to be able to get to them right away. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I so, ideally, ideally, if you identify the guy, Monday is the perfect time yeah, to have him I, done. Wow. Well, it's so everything. Are you it's, saying GM and coach wrapped up? Just Monday? GM. Yeah, just GM. And I, th- but I think, listen, they bring these guys in. They're gonna. When they interview Rick Smith, they're going to know who his very, very short list of head of coaches, coaches are. are. They're going to know who Dodds, Morocco Brown, all oh. of these guys. Who was your head coach? I didn't hear. Well, I picked I picked GM, but I, if I I just I have a feeling that there's listen and and I I can be a bit of a cynic when it comes to the Chicago Bears, obviously, and it's I very, we very warm. No, coach. who who we thought we were gonna it's get gonna go hired first, first and when we think but it's I'll gonna throw be it out there. And throw I think the that, coach in here, I think please. that this plays Follow into my it. lead. So they fired Flores, and you saw immediately all of the negative media that the Miami Dolphins organization was getting. And I think part of me thinks that Ted and George see that. And say to themselves, "Well, if we hire this fucking guy, it's going to be all positive for us." They did it. They did but it. But then we'll that's, the that's essentially removing Polian from the. I, I'm. 
can I can I give one piece sure. of information just real quick, just so Fair. everybody knows? Their when the fan Goomba says they mention, I'm sorry, they are doing Zoom interviews first, then pare the list down, and then bring them in for personal yeah. interviews. When, but when Flores the... is coming in for a personal interview on Friday. Yes. Because that has been reported. The, the Zoom interviews are for the guys that are currently coaching right. uh, who can't Hackett. get away and they're not traveling. Like Hackett is on Saturday. Correct. I believe. Correct, right. So the last time this happened, just for all portions, right, the last game yeah. of the season was played on December 28th, and the Chicago Bears hired Ryan Pace on January 8th. So within 10 days of the end of the season – right? Nine, once you do the day that you fire him, they had a replacement GM chosen that quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think this, I mean, two or three weeks, I don't think there's a chance in fucking hell. You lose your coach, most likely, if you do that. I thought that they would hire the GM first and then figure out the I'm not even sold, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not even sold that they're going to do that. I they're think just gonna I honestly him. feel like if Polian is a part of this, let's just say Brian Flores again. If they if they're blown away by Brian Flores, are they going to risk losing him to the Giants? Right. And it's very similar again to to 2000 and and that season when it was within a day or two that John Fox was hired. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, in all seriousness, lined up beforehand. The only reason it didn't happen in lockstep is they gave Ryan a chance to sit down and talk to him to make sure that the relationship would work. So that, so Shane, your your timeline is mine. Yeah. You're both on the same timeline. Well, Who's yeah. your head coach, Shane? Flores? I just, I Could, really do. do I, they I, shock I, the world and get Harbaugh. I don't, I feel I've maintained, listen, I would love Harbaugh here. 100%. I can never get what I want, Sharon. I just feel from <laughs> Me Jump and Street. Both, yeah. I feel from Jump Street with him taking the pay cut last year. I feel, and I, I just feel he's going to get it. This has all been, and I don't blame him. You have to play the cards that you're dealt. And when if you can strike and get more money out of your employer by saying, hey, I might bounce. I think Day is doing the same thing. Me Just too. getting their name mentioned right. earns them millions of dollars. Yeah, and it's, I mean. I don't, I don't think he's an option. I really Ooh, don't. Day. Day or Harbaugh. Both. Yeah, I don't, I don't I, either. I, I, and the whole thing is there's no ties to Polian. There's no ties to any. To, well, I Harbaugh understand that. Played for Polian. Harbaugh. He, well, also, a, he was did, traded to. He traded him, right? From Didn't Chicago, he trade him to Baltimore? And then he traded him to Baltimore. I so just they have that it. working relationship. I just don't Bill see. Bill Polian it. knows football. He's got to know what we all know. But that's Harbaugh is the most qualified candidate out of all of them. All of them. Is anybody interviewing Josh McDaniels? Nobody. I haven't seen him. No. Well, I keep the, seeing him the name. Like everybody keeps mentioning his name. Like I didn't even know he was a candidate. I he's, think he's. Got, I haven't seen. He's him not. In Indy, Indy, well, and Polian would not end him. Has yeah, ended Polian. It. it was Polian here. Right. Well, no, no, no. McDaniels what I'm saying, and I'm not, not, I'm not, I know Cars was more of a McDaniels guy, and I think uh, Barely Bear also. My but dad I th- said he's a good coach. They said that he is adamant that he's taken over for Belichick. Full control wherever he goes. Yes. That seems to be um, the other st- And so I think that's probably what's turning a lot of places. There's been off. a few reports. A because- lot of bridges when he bounced. Oh, yeah. Because he hired There's, coaches to the Colts, yeah, and Eberflus. then bounced on them too. He hired he hired Eberflus, correct? Correct. And he's up for the Bears gig. There's also been a couple That's of reports true. that because of the way that things ended in San Francisco with Balk, that Harbaugh is wanting the same or 
much higher levels of control than other folks. And better or worse, that tends to be a red flag for a lot of these career general manager folks. You, Who's your coach, Shane? I gave you bowls, I think. No, I think they're hired. I l- listen. I, I I think they're hiring Flores. I do. I think that that they're bringing Got him in on Friday. Like I said, and I it, I know you can't base everything off Vegas, but they're a lot smarter than I am. They have a lot more inside information than I do. And he went from what plus five hundred last night to plus one fifty fifty today. That's a pretty massive. You know how I feel about stats. Really, the stats are for losers. Final scores for winners. Imagine you know, there, our imagine a lot our... of there's a lot of winners in Vegas, and it's the people that own the places, and that's they're the ones <laughs> exactly. with the info. How about the fact that that coach is talking about winning? Yeah, our ownership was throwing stats out there. No, that's they the... talked about winning. Winning's How important, nice. but just not that important. Oh my god. <laughs> Can they luck into the right guy? That's really, I guess, everything. Smith and Flores is a home home run. run. Smith and Flores is an absolute home run. If that that gets you to this moment, like, and that's what gets us through, um, you know, that he's got, uh, he's got to have. Is that your coach too, Cars? I, so I I think I'm with Shane. I think that that's it. I think Wednesday at the latest is kind of when you'll see um, Rick Wednesday. Smith named. It'll be about ten days. That's that's kind of my my rotating number of you know Wednesday ten days after it gets you in for the guys um, for the next round of interviews and and things like that. So it just seems to make the most amount of sense. Cherie, what's your gut? I do think by the end of next week, um, they'll hire at minimum the GM. Who that is? I don't. I don't know. Blake Bortles. <laughs> Leave <me> alone. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, what? The 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 problem with the coach, and if you look at the list, if it's not Flores. It's not Dan Quinn when it's not Peterson. You're waiting till that person is done with the playoffs to hire that coach. Yep. Right. And so the list of everybody. Well, it could be Eberflus. Uh, I don't think he's. I don't think it is, but I mean, that's a, that's yeah. an option. But them. most of the guys that really seem to make the biggest run, Bowles, Leftwich, um, the guy in Green yeah. Bay, or Hackett, Hackett in Green Bay. Uh, Frazier, right? Like those guys, th- those teams are posed are poised to make potentially deep playoff runs. Mm-hmm. So it doubles those down. Those could on... lose tomorrow night. Oh God, I hope it's not Saturday. Well. I, just... I, I, but, uh. but that's. I think again, that works. Like, tie back to John Fox, mm-hmm. uh, and and Phil's favorite quote, right? The the best ability is availability. Well, As a coach, he's available. You can hire him now, and you can start building your coaching staff. You can do all those things because the un- the other unknown in all of this is you don't want to be last to the dance getting your coordinators and position coaches because we did that I believe with Lovey we were one of the last ones and you you know and his initial stats were garbage um, so you've got you've you've got a finding a guy like Flores who's available now and a GM that you can go in Rick Smith and go get now. They're extremely qualified, and I don't want to take away from it, but then you build your organization, your scouting department, your coaches, everything, and you get your pick of every person that you want. I don't give a fuck that he smokes weed. They all smoke weed. Smoke weed every day. You know what time that is? Claudio, what's your thought here? I think they're bringing in GM Shane Marsal and then <laughs> I'll take it. Phil Atoshin. I'll take Dude, it. By the end I of will the week. take it. Fucking kid I would spitting knowledge fucking, finally. It. Finally. It. He gets prediction. it right. This guy. I would fucking do everything in my power uh, to make that happen. That would be it would work. It would a work. Dream no, I, I, I like I mean the GM, I don't know. I mean, honestly I don't know much about a lot of these guys, but 
I do like Flores as a coach. Well, honestly, the, when it comes to the GMs, none of us do. Yeah, <laughs> We're looking I mean, at their draft results and yeah. I mean, sadly, honestly, most of the coaches is the same yeah, way too. Yeah, it's, it's not an shit. it's not an impressive. I think what Flores in Miami was impressive though. What he did, you know, he, he, especially he, over the last half of the season. Yeah, yeah. and Owen like was Flores. talking about his defense. Obviously, the offensive coordinator situation well, is going to be a critical huge in his question mark. Three yes. and three and four seasons for him. Let me just pose this question to you. I see it, saw it in the chat a lot. Do you think there's any chance the Bears bring in a guy, a coach that will be GM and head coach? No. No. Won't happen. No. Okay. Well, I want to address Logan's comment about building staff from a loser team. It's not necessarily building a staff from the losing a loser team. Um, but that's kind of Logan, please don't take this the wrong way. And if you do, I I probably don't care. But um <laughs> there are there are there are good Cars people on on losing staffs. So like yeah. th- this, yeah. Those are the this guys is, that are available. Yeah, there you know us losing and going four and twelve wasn't because Vic Fangio or you know someone like that sucked. It was because the the folks did. So you know you're not looking for pedigree. You're looking for guys like Jay Rogers who can coach the shit out of a position, and those guys exist in a lot of losing places. Here. I want to answer Frankie pretty much with your last word in the sentence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I need a maniac because that's what wins football fucking games. They were the looking Chicago at it like Bears. it was a negative that he was exactly that yeah. he would go up and f- make his thoughts known. And I mean, Stephen Ross came to him and wanted him to fucking tank. <laughs> I mean, and, he's and like, you no, and he fine. refused, saying, "What the fuck am yeah, I?" He went out and won for? games. He but why out, is he? A- he tried He's, to build he, a pro a winning program. That's the goal. You, That's he, the he, fucking goal. He did it because the people around him were incompetent and couldn't do it. Exactly. You know, you look like I get it. The he's pissed at Tua because he looks at him. Tua had like four games where he threw forty passes and had under three hundred yards. That's insane and should never happen. He was such a checkdown guy. He just had enough. So yeah, there's always concerns. There's concerns with every single one of these coaches from DeBall's inability to stick with the run game to left, you which is left, lack of experience. The game. Who cares? Just Brian, there's nobody perfect. Brian Dayball went to high school with who? Bill Polian's Polian son. son. There's a, there's a I connection. Might be. Dayball, the only saving grace for me on Dayball is – Every fourth down play, yeah. I know that Phil is going to have an aneurysm because he yeah, draws up some of the absolute worst fourth down plays I have ever seen. And oh, Phil yeah. will, like, Claudio, none of, if that none of happens. Which are, none of which are runs. No, none. none. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just go Facebook Live every fourth down. <laughs> That's, that would be 100% your job for just for comedic relief alone. Job. Wait, this week... I'm just taking the fourth nope. down. Nope. <laughs> I'm just taking the fourth down Matt Nagy plays, and we're gonna have a ceremonial goodbye to Matt yeah. Nagy and the offensive plays this week on TTNL. Me, my father, and George will be live Saturday on our X's with the O show. I got to play you that stuff. X's with the O's. Become a patron. Shane, apparently we have... Let me double check. We broke the 666. We were at 666. And somebody broke that uh, mark for us. I doubt they were from the region. They weren't from the region. (laughs) No, we're back up to 666. Someone lied. I thought he went to 667. But every Saturday as well as the pop-up shows, when there is a coaching hire. We are not going to be live here. We're going to be live on our patron side, speaking directly to you. I know Shane has addressed some issues there that we'll get into during shout-outs, but X is with the O's. All of the tape analysis, Draft Mob will be returning, breaking down the draft free agency, and obviously the coaches with special guests like Olin Krutz, Eric Kramer, Chris Zorich, uh, Steve Edwards, and, and media heads like David Kaplan sitting in. X is with the O's. DDP, Coach O, Barely Zemo, 
and they actually figure out the why. Yeah, he gets to the races because Daniels actually does a great job. But they did all that <laughs> moving around. Get the quarterback right into position again. Well, crying out oh, loud. Out, He's getting fancy. I haven't said it, but Phil said it a hundred times. It's all trick plays. A trick with the wrong guy. He's been pull better him. off pulling the ball and him going up the hole. Never go backwards to get one yard. Look at that formation right there. They're consistently in this kind of shit. Where, say you push Allen Robinson way outside that number. Put him way out there. And then put someone way down here. All of a sudden, the box gets a little less tight. But you can tell that the accountability of when it comes. No one's calling anybody out on that defense. Those linebackers have to maintain gap responsibility full speed. You got to press that thing inside out. So when he exactly. oversets here yes. and he gets outside, that step, that right foot yeah. step, sets yeah. him too wide. Yeah. And now you've turned that defensive end and into a two gap player who can tackle inside or outside your five. Matt Nagy sold himself because he's a good talker. He's a good talker. But what you need as a head coach and a GM is someone who's going to pick the right people and put them in the right places and play to their strengths. And you've also got to be able to, and it's crucial as any leader, is to be able to accept when you make a mistake. Look, I gave him a chance. I gave him an opportunity. I put him here. I gave him this responsibility. I did the tools. I did that to, to help him to do it. It's clearly not working. I've never heard someone say, I made a mistake in this hire. And I mean, regardless of if you, you're not a football person, you still hired someone. I'm going to tell you right. something right now. Those are coordinators and everybody that's coaching on its staff could be great. If you've got a guy up there that's a schmuck, you're not going anywhere. And that's what's happening. And when you get a real leader, he'll hire the guys that are going to do the job. Get a coach in here that puts a priority on accountability, game planning. I don't see any of this. If I was to assess any coach and they're in shotgun on fourth and one, fire that coach. It's just so much that you could do from under center that you can't do in shotgun. Plus, you're not five yards away from the line of scrimmage. The yep. Bears culture for me, all the way back since I was a kid, was the toughest guys there were. These guys are pussies. <laughs> Breaking down the key plays. Big moments. And take a deeply detailed look back at each week's big play performers. <laughs> oh my God, Mickey Mouse! Exclusively for TTNL patrons. Exes with the O's. <laughs> From the fans in the stands to the follows on the gram on the gram. Thanks for your support, showing love in the DM We stay spent and strong, fight together till the end Now it's time to shout out worldwide friends and fam life. The network that keeps it real, 100 crew So many in the world that I gotta show love to For some this part, see the show is at its end But for me it's so important to thank the charter members and the fans Build the network, speak the truth through the tape Never run around the truth, no narratives we create Set them straight, no bubble screen on for the day Call your chain, getting nervous, cause keeping them up too late That's it, no more to say they get the shot of vital But hurry up, cause the postman's getting homicidal Shout out, it's a strong I know you hear me, baby Shout out, I know you see me, baby Shout out, we gotta holler at you Keep it 100 cool, gotta show love to <laughs> I know you hear me, baby. Shout out. I know you see me, baby. Shout out. We gotta holler at you. Keep it 100 cool. Gotta show love to the network that keeps it real. Sis is strong. Oh, parade.
bring that fat ass over here. I wanna get it in my mouth. I wanna get it in my mouth. Oh, I wanna suck on your fat ass. Somebody's ass today. <laughs> has to come up every time we play that song. You've got to play that drop. It just has to I'm just glad I finally have a drop after all this time. <laughs> oh, I have yeah, my buddy, first you one. Drop. You got fans, fans in the stands. We can't play the Claudio daughter at a concert in Philly no. one because uh, <laughs> copyright infringement. <laughs> the timing was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> You nailed the pitch. That's pretty yeah. scary, Shane. You yeah. nailed the pitch. I'm a pretty it. good source. <laughs> I'm gonna miss, be, I'm gonna miss those drops. I am he'll be a drops. source. Yes, mm. he, was a, he was a source. He was a, he was a source machine, of many, dude. many days. We gotta get some more Ted. We gotta get some Ted Phillips drop. Phillips drops. That's more. No. More. No. We're we're gonna. Oh no. my god. We're gonna be dropping a lot of clips here soon. We're gonna. Wipe the fucking slate clean with naggy. Oh, no. yeah. oh, the naggy drops. I'm gonna miss the naggy drops. Great get not... off. Yeah, get off. Ryan the Pace. Soundboard. Right. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna text. We need to get the like dude the presser a for, huh. for Caden Whitlow. Cut up the whole presser shit. Yeah. Well, well there, were, <laughs> Colleen. There were a lot of. Uh, Frustrating parts. Um, and you're the most frustrating part, George. What's Funk going to do if they hire Dodds or Smith? They're fucking bald. <laughs> oh. You can get the Manscape out. You should, you should text him and ask him. Can we ask Funk to get Pace to come on the show now? I, got, like, I can ask him now if he still talks to him. Like so all yeah. these dudes, like Khan yeah. is bald, Dodds is bald, Smith is bald. Ron, yep, Rick Smith's bald. I wear a hat just to hide how bald I'm becoming. So, I mean, that's... Cars is getting a lot of love tonight. It is. Thank Show you. Thank one. you. This. Yep. Big plays are nice. I think we got to keep big plays are nice. No, we don't that want one him stays. On. As a memory. As a memory, it has to stay. Me and Cars agree. Out with the old. No, the big, right. the big plays, though, it just... It just regain some love. Shane. He's got excellent get off. He's got. Sivius. <laughs> Sivius, do you have excellent get off? Gee, ha! <laughs> this convention here is called the Cobb Quickie. <laughs> <laughs> You're so dead. It's been nice knowing you. <laughs> uh, hopefully, we could get Ryan Pace on here and hear his side of the story. We do have an invite to Chicago from, from Coach Willie, Phil, to oh, yes? air our grievances. I will c I'm will. i coming to Chicago next year, Willie. Speaking of which, that might lead us in. New England, Shane. Yes. Bears versus Patriots. A TTNL meet-up tailgate is in the works. And One did, for should the we tell decade. them the... The super secret surprise? No. Potentially. Save that for next week. Keep that. There is a big would, secret surprise. Everybody would be blown away. We'll just put it that way. We'll put we'll put it out next show. Next week's show. Gonna have to wait. But it's gonna be huge. Boy, God, Kenneth, Lee, what the hell is going not on? That. We should just do a show about our drops. <laughs> And with patrons, like does it Norris? stay or yeah. does it go? Like Michael Renfro, you go. Fuck yourself. Because I'm the furthest thing from a blog boy besides you. Nope! No, no. Blog Phil boy. is a vlog boy, yeah, right? He's a video yes. blogger. Video. Hey, guys. This is your guy, Phil. On no, today's like, show, hey, hey, yo, man. <laughs> <laughs> drop it like it's hot. Drop we it got like a couple hot. drops of your dad we can't even play. Oh my god, <laughs> when I talk Claudio, to him, you we're know, gonna play. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm gonna talk to him. I was just gonna say, though, back when your dad swears, it just it, 
It's, just, it's great. Everybody it's always laughs. When he says pussy, it's fucking When he says pussy. All of us are looking up laughing. Just <laughs> randomly, Shane, like during shows, you gotta be like, hey, Phil, it's Shane. Uh, listen, and <laughs> just <laughs> randomly <laughs> drop that in. Hey, Phil. You, you have Shane. that drop of my dad, right? Where is it? For Where years, when Phil and I talk to each other on the phone, we never say hello or it's always yo. Every time we answer the fucking phone, we do the Claudio thing, but we do it on time. Uh... <laughs> Phil, can you hear me? This is your dad speaking. Can you hear me? <laughs> Vargas. You see Vargas? Vargas, <laughs> Vargas is the best. <laughs> when Just watch Vargas's react one more time. He just turn. Phil, can you hear me? This is your dad speaking. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> he sticks his tongue out. <laughs> he laughs with his tongue out. It's hysterical. Anyway. I have, have a better internet connection. Uh, Next yeah, time. Yeah. I In thought New Ron England. G was going like, to pull a machete you know, out and slaughter people. He was so mad at the <laughs> internet connection. In the East Coast, they have great wi- uh, internet connection out yep. there, Sheree. We know that. I'm oh, sorry. It's Soldier Field. <laughs> the signal sucks. Soldier Field in the city over there. We're going to be out in the fucking woods at Foxborough. Yeah. You're going to have to go to the Foxborough. hotel. Just walk to the hotel right there and you're uh, fine. Malls and fucking movie We're, theaters. And... You'll figure out. There's some big news. Apparently we'll somebody doesn't think I belong, internet. guys. Do you guys think oh, Sharia? Oh, God, is... Rich. What? Never trust anybody yeah. that doesn't have an actual profile photo. He's got like bullshit. Yeah. So. What is that? A heart? Yeah. Rich. Rich so your nickname is Dick, right? right yeah. Dicky boy. I bet your Dick mom's Dick. ugly, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> She's up, probably upstairs. He's in the basement. Yeah. Do you have the cockroach? Do you have the cockroach clip? We let's got just, your back, Sharif. Let's just, your back let's just let's just nuke the show. Rich, your mom's a cunt. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> that's your sh- that's a shout out. That's See it. you next week. <laughs> anyway, let's start with cars. We usually start with the woman of the house. Let's start with her. Yes. I don't want to hear Dicky Boy again. Go ahead, Cherie. Do you have anybody to shout out? Oh, of course. There Gotta we shout go. out you guys. I know. Still going through stuff, so shout out to y'all for what y'all dealing with, anything y'all dealing with, and still managing to put on a good show every week, and with all of the, yes, thank you, Demo, all of the time and effort that you guys put into the network, it's really appreciated, you know, from me, the fans, you guys see all the love that you get. I want to shout out the fans. I mean, they constantly showing love and support. They, the TCNL family really rides for us, so... Um, shout out to them and everybody be safe we got a new strain out here that's a lot more contagious so be safe good stuff Cherie Lady Bear you will be with us in New England we're also going to be going to Chicago for another TTNL meet and greet party just like we did last year with Sammy the Bull I gotta shout him out because I wanted to get him on the last BHL, but we were just the misery that is the I'll Chicago him, Bears. Let him pull you, Sammy. He called me he's like, "Fuck it, Sammy wants to come on. Fuck that guy." I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Not true at all. I just completely fucking forgot because I was just laced in rage. Anyway, Sammy brought it. We're gonna do this again. Mikey T helping out. Greg Braggs. We had so much fun. Cars came out. Steven Johnson, Steve Edwards, Chris Zorich. We're going to do it even bigger next time. And now we know what we need to do in the post-game show. We're going to do it at a bar locally when we go to Chicago. When the schedule comes out, we'll let you know. So everybody, no more excuses. Shane will be there yes, I will next be. year. Finally, Cars and Shane. And Actually, me. Cars and I have met three times. We just haven't told anybody, Phil. Oh, we really? didn't want to. 
didn't want to make you feel bad. I had pizza with you guys and Claudia. I can't wait to meet you for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got fucking multiple pictures with Claudio. <laughs> there we, we were in the ice cream shop Benelli's. the other day, yeah. and there's Claudio standing right next to Shane. Yeah, I think I have my picture. arm around him in the picture, right? Exactly. <laughs> Shit, he forgot. Oh, my God. They have us up on this ice cream shop called sweet creams phenomenal anyway cars shout outs uh yeah so first thanks for all the interactions this week it's at least been a little bit more uplifting talking with you guys as opposed to listening to the leaders of my football team so thank you for that other than that uh i have to brag my daughters have had an amazing week of doing gymnastics routines and things that they haven't done before so my little that's right. My little uh, my little Maisie, who is the uh, angriest and sweetest child, is nailing handstands that she's never done. And Aubrey is right. launching off of springboards and doing things. So for my, uh, for my little ones, they are finally becoming uh, more active. So big shout out to them. But that's it for me. Get in somebody's ass today. And thank you. You've been better children. I haven't had to get in your ass this week while mommy's been sick. So thank you for that. The classic drop now. Who cut that that quickly? Actually, I, who was it? Jackal. Jackal. I'm so Jackal's doing shit. Jackal's doing, doing shit. shit. He's like, I gotta go. I'm gonna shit in my pants, but. <laughs> 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 I'm just a fan. I'm <laughs> nice. Very nice. Very nice. Well Can only imagine the smells coming out of that thing, but you know. <laughs> it keeps getting better. <laughs> Good job, Jackal, tonight. He was with us earlier. Same with Caden. We had a full house backfield. Claudio. Shout out. Yes, I'm going to, like Cherie, the fans, I mean, the show was up to like almost 900 people watching live. It was amazing. Uh, so the fan, I'm going to shout out a few guys that haven't heard it in the chat in a while. Brian Mobes, Leroy Klimola, The Snake Eyes, Stu Dogs 81 and Bears fan Goomba. He's been in there all night. Um, and then, of course, I got to shout out my kids, especially two of my daughters. Um, you know, they got COVID. They're doing okay, but... You know, one of them has it for the second time. Uh, so, second time. And, like, second time. Yeah, my 19 year old, Adriana. Wow. So, she's doing okay. She's feeling a little better, but still, it's scary, you know? And yes. it's, like Sharice said, the stuff is spreading around. Just be safe. I got a buddy that got it too. You know, he didn't want to get vaccinated. So now he's a little sick. So, you know, just got to be careful, everybody out there. So, that's a shout out. Everybody's awesome, right. Claudio. Shouting out your daughters, the fans. Shane. Yeah, I'm going to. 10 days, Shane. 10 yeah, days. I know, I know. Monday, actually. That's not even 10. No. Because, yeah, it's going to be Thursday. So, yeah, it's going to come come quicker than you expect, as Ela <laughs> knows watching. very, very well. Oh, you said. <laughs> That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> it's going to come quick. No, you're late on that. That's what she said. <laughs> It was well, already seeing processed how he was in my brain when I said it. <laughs> I was trying to get it because I thought he was going to say it, but he no, did a good job. No, Cherie kind of alluded to the to probably what I'm going to share here a little bit. My my family's had, you know, it's been a crazy, crazy few months uh, for my family. My daughter was born on June 3rd. My son was diagnosed with cancer uh, in early August. Uh, he ended up beating that and I was took my son to get his second vaccine on Saturday when I left we were driving a couple of blocks away to see Hila who was at work and I got a phone call that my mom has been diagnosed with uh, colon cancer so the the hits can continue to come um, fortunately uh, they got her right into to surgery on Monday um, so, you know three or four hour process uh, they were afraid initially that that it had spread into her bladder and that's what um, that's how I lost my aunt was from bladder cancer so you can imagine the tie-in there 
and under COVID restrictions, what makes it worse is we can't even get in, you know, to see my mom, uh, only just via FaceTime when she's feeling up to it. But, you know, she had her, she had her surgery. She's on the mend right now. But, uh, like I said, end of the day, it's my mom. It doesn't matter that I'm 45 years old. She's, (laughs) she's still my, she's still my lady. And, uh, my first love of my life so it's always it's always tough but no matter how many hits keep on coming we always forge ahead that's what i do because i have a strong family strong bond with all of you guys strong friendships and that's what it's all about and that's why we can do it and we will do it and uh, like we did with riley my mom is a very emotional person but uh i did get to facetime her and one of the last things that she said to me was if riley can beat this I can too, and we're gonna rally around that, and we're gonna win again. Well said, man. I mean, this guy's been through so much, man. Oh God, ups and downs. It's not easy, uh, and that's where my understanding life. We get one life. You know, it's very difficult to see how or, you know, project where it's going to be or what's going to happen next in this world. It's family first, always. I've always said that. And everybody, it seems like on this network is going through tough times, but everybody shows up Wednesday nights and when we're when we're doing stuff to to bring to you fans the truth tonight i shout out shane and his family i know how hard that you know shit fuck cancer that's all i could say you know i really yeah it's just so hard so shout out to you and your family you're my boy brother for life so much fun on the show but in real life this is the escape so I got to shout out all of you guys. Cars, great job tonight. Just had a lot of fun, you know, weeding the yard, so to speak, of what the bears have put us through. How many weeds have we had to whack? Get in somebody's ass today. <laughs> it was a long road to get there, but we got Yo. there. <laughs> Cars always dropping bombs. <laughs> <laughs> Claudio, Cherie, you guys know how much I appreciate you. I'm only disappointed I didn't get that last game with Uncle Claudio. I thought no. Tate was more upset than I was. I was upset, but I had a got the well, COVID. Got to get tested. I didn't want to bring that yeah, over. We don't, to we don't it, take so. any chances. We had to deal with my daughter had COVID, so completely get it. Um, I want to say this though, Olin Krutz, I shout you out. Not only for giving your time and be, you know, you're just a tremendous human being and a friend and a person to this network. You believe what we do is important and to give us your time and to bring it like you did in truth and the spirit of the show. It really meant a lot. So I want to shout him out. I thought that was just a tremendous interview and a lot of it answers to questions you have were answered i want to shout out cam beige our guy i know he's still struggling in the hospital in the emergency room he's continuously fighting this battle so cam beige i i I was very touched emotionally because someone sent me cam watching my rant while he was in the hospital and listen if i can change one person or make one person's life better i've done what i've set out for i know that's kind of cliche but my goal to shane was to stop the bullshit narratives stop allowing people like the old network to do a narrative to get clicks. We can't be associated with that. We have to be associated with uncovering the truth and everyone's opinion is gonna matter, including the people involved. And that's all of these, Claudio, 
the jackal, Cherie, cars, even if we're indifferent, that's the best formula. Now, only if the Chicago Bears could do the same thing that we've done here. Passion, pride, family. If they put those things right into their equation, the W's would be the most important thing for them. Fortunately, right now we have hope in Bill Polian. Never saw a 79 year old. Is he 79? Yep. It's so important, but he is. So Bill Polian, I'm shouting you out tonight with all the fans, all 982 of you that were listening live tonight to the best Bears show on the planet. It's not a doubt. I ask you to smash the like button and show a friend. As Jackal would say, be a friend, tell a friend. All of you guys in the chat, I don't want to go through a million of you. I can thank everybody, and I promise I will next week. But tonight is about this show, this network. I can't be more proud of where we are and what impact we have on the media, like Mark Grody told me, and to the former players like Olin showing you tonight, to all of you fans. So do me the favor. I'm not afraid to ask for favors, Shane will tell you. Tell people about the show. You might save a person's life. You might make someone laugh. You might piss off the person that needs to get pissed off to get up and do something about it. Just like the movie that impacted my life, this don't look up. I'm asking everybody to start looking up. Start looking around and find the truth. Tonight, I'm so proud that Shane and Cars were able to speak on their truths. And hopefully, the Chicago Bears will name a new head coach and a new GM that has that passion pride and that togetherness that family that's all i gotta say tonight guys i mean four hours and ten minutes flew by usually i'm exhausted but i feel hyped up tonight i really do i really am excited i I really want to see what what comes of this so god bless you all in the chat all of you even the haters I hope everybody's doing really, really well in your lives out there. For Shane Marsaw, Cherie, Lady Bear, who's hot, according to sources. <laughs> Claudio, yo! Claude, you want to try it one more time, Claude? Yo! I did it. There you go. Yeah. He's got no problem doing it like that. And, an idiot. <laughs> and for my guy, Cars. I'm your boy, Draft Dr. Phil. Please sign up, become a member of the patron. The TateNeverLies.com. I'm telling you, it's going to be worth every penny. Nope. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, we're very economical, my family. (laughs) 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 You might be on next week's show got to pay attention for everybody this is keeping it 100 on the tape never lies network this has been a shy city sports presentation and a tape never lies network production keeping it 100 thanks for tuning in to the tape never lies network oh but Cars always bounces. He's out. He bounced out. Get in somebody's ass today. That's what he's <laughs> going to do, I guess. He's going to go get somebody's ass. The after show right now. Cherie, know, just... Cherie was on fire tonight. James, thank you. Let's put up some of these. Um... Oh, okay. Well, I was reading that, but that's right, okay. that. wow, Phil, you maybe finished. Don't look up. We started watching it and gave up on it about halfway through, but you got us to finish, and thank you for that. See Shane, see that Logan Frost. How about this? Thank one? you. Oh, look at Funkster Jones. 
Can we put up that swag shop? He's right. We also can give you 20% off, Funkster. Okay. There it is. Just Play put it. in the code BHL20. You get 20% off some swag. Just put that code in there, or you can get free shipping. Support our network. We appreciate that. Shane, I hope you're right in the prediction that Monday we'll have a new coach. Lord Cars has left. There's still 374 people waiting for quote. This has been a Shy City Sports presentation and a Tape Never Lies Network production. Keeping it 100. Thanks for tuning in to the Tape Never Lies Network.